formerly. As we count down to our first Group 1 of the new season, honouring an absolute giant of the turf in Winks. You can see her. Keen to go outside of the two top in the market. That is, of course, Zaki, who's been solid right there at the top of the market at slightest of margins. There's been good late support, particularly with that track upgrade for Fangirl. $6 into $5.50. King Colorado Navajo Peak Fangirl is back in the second half of the field. They're followed then by Francesco Guardi on the inside of Ossipenko. Uh, back last of all, Montefilia, and uh, well back uh, in the field there at this point is Dewis. Uh, down the side, Lindemann in front from Zaki and Major Beale. Uh, Golden Mail rails into fourth on the inside of Hinge. Think it over goes forward. Uh, on the outside of Princess Grace, then came Communists off the track from King Colorado. Fangirl cluttered up a bit. Francesco Guardi from Dewis, Ossipenko, and Mawunga is back third last as they straighten up now. And Lindemann after the fast start leads the way. The favourite Breathing down his neck now, Zaki. And quickly, Zaki went up to take the lead from Think It Over. The inside, Princess Grace. Fangirl on the outside running on. Princess Grace, the inside from Zaki. And now Fangirl has studied a lengthen. Fangirl wide out. Princess Grace, the inside. Princess Grace and Fangirl. Fangirl won the wing stakes. Fangirl right on the wire. Beat the American mare, Princess Grace and Zaki third. Then hinged Dan do us close up. Further back to... And James McDonald, not sure that he's won it because he had Princess Grace on the rail who was super close, but the pick for Swaller gets 150. And he does it with owners who have been with him right from the start. Deb Kapitas' uh, father saw Chris Waller interview. In a really strong race and watch Jewess in the middle with the orange cap as well. I reckon she's in for a massive uh, preparation. Uh, also King Colorado, he has finished midfield. Committee for many years, the key clean PB Lawrence Stakes, 1400 metre group two weight for age contest this spring, Mr Brightside. Your call to go back to back and be the first horse to do it for 50 years, Hutch. Yeah, well... Uh... I'm with attrition on top, I like the way he's returned. On stage, Mr. Brightside is now 225. Nice little spread of money outside of the short favourite at 225, Mr. Brightside. And he's clearly dominating the turnover. A length and a half away to Edison, third. Chassis, fourth, the inner. And dropping in one off the fence in fifth place, Mr. Brightside getting a lovely run. A length and a half attrition, three deep around Pinstriped. And on the inside, Regal Power, who's niggled out at the 700. A length and a half pounding Uncle Bryn. Tuvalu a long way back. El Botagon, Agon. Forgot you. 500 to go. Buffalo River sold up the speed as it loves to do. Three quarters of a length. Western Empire. Two lengths to Edison. Mr. Brightside's creeping forward. Tracked by pinstripe attrition wide. Then came Chassis under pressure from pounding and well back in the field. Then is Tuvalu. So it's Western Empire and Buffalo River with Mr. Brightside closing in. 250 to go. Mr. Brightside ambles up and race clear. Then pinstripe pounding and attrition behind them. But Mr. Brightside, 100 metres to go. Will go back to back. Too good. Supremely good. Won it by two lengths. Second pinstripe from Aegon. And then Attrition and Tuvalu running through the line. Behind them pounding. Out the Killers Classic and well might they. 12 from 24 in his career now. Most of them on Australian soil for this unfashionable son of bull bars. If you look at the pedigree, that's he is something special. Two Doncasters, two PB Lawrences in behind. Pinstripe. The... A lot fitter for the run, but it's all about Brightside. Mr Brightside, what a performance from this horse. Nigel. Order. He's now into 360 over La Vampire, or Le Vampire, who's 370 solid. Went up 460. Griff is Castle's... Vampire shows the way. Three quarters to Griff. Followed then by Kemantari's only son, Manwe, who travels third on the inside of the favourite Cabalas. Two lengths away to Ducas, then came Kintaya. Further back to Tom Kitten on the inside of Tuta Levita. End cap racing held up third last. They come around the turn. Levon Pierce still under a grip, shows the way. Griff under plenty of pressure second. Cabalas, no excuses in the third position with clean air. Followed by Kintaya. Further back to Marmware and Tom Kitten coming to the outside. Griff showing plenty of fight, laying it down to Levon Pierce. Kintaya running on. Cabalas one pass. And Tom Kitten starting to lengthen. Kintar in the middle of the track. Kintar racer to the lead. Tom's on the scene. Tom Kitten and Kintar and Tom. Tom got the bob and beat Kintar. End cap charging home at a third. Then Ducas and Griff from. When he comes back, I want to jump back on board. And Tom Kitten was huge there first up. 
bring on, uh, you would imagine, 2,000 metre races like the Spring Champion Stakes. It'd be absolutely perfect for him. He's a son of he's a son of Harry Angel out of transfers. That was 1,300. Couldn't help but notice a lot of jockeys wanting to stay away from the fence here at Caulfield, and in particular the three scratchings and the 22 cents deductions. Barber, one of those runners coming out. It's a small select field of eight, but they've all been spent. Last 500 metres to go. Coincide from hedged about a half length away. Two for the back as Legacy's improving her position. About to peel three wide from V8, getting off the fence as well. Two for the back to Little bros deadly press and then la zebra coincide 250 meters to go led from hedge who throws out a serious challenge and v8 got the split and uses it v8 accelerated at the 150 a length and a half legacies hedge little bros v8 holding on v8 won the mcneil three quarters legacies photo third little bros from hedge and she light was the eye catcher behind those horses look come via the mcneil to go and grab a caulfield guineas V8 is pointed towards here in mid-October based on his prominent return here, the VRC. I think there's only two horses here for the Guineas. I think the winner, very professional, and uh, she light uh, up to a mile, may blink is on. Uh, very exciting. Uncle Brinda completed the tile importer heavily. And they're racing and the summit from barrier number one broke well with Junipel and also probing up Sir Lucan. Buster Bash the Perth by Junipel Regal Power from Shiraz. Emissary improving. Then Deshaun Sweet Jr. Uncle Bryn. Well back Sulcum. Hustle of War. And towards the back as he's a shocker. Up to the corner. 450 metres to go. Buster Bash with on the outside. Flash flood as they really do quicken it up now. About a length and a half Sir Lucan. The summit's getting off their backs. Junipel back on the inside. Jimmy the Bear is coming home hard. It's Flash Flood, 250 metres to go from the summit. Jimmy the Bear, Junipel the inside, still Flash Flood at the 150. Sulcum is flashing through. Here comes Sulcum. Sulcum from the clouds. What a win. Sulcum wins it by half a length. Flash Flood, Jimmy the Bear. The summit at a half, Sir Lucan. The summit's getting off their backs. Junipel back on the inside. Jimmy the Bear is coming home hard. It's Flash Flood, 250 metres to go from the summit. Jimmy the Bear. Junipel the inside, still flash flood at the 150. Sulcum is flashing through. Here comes Sulcum. Sulcum from the clouds. What a win. Sulcum wins it by half a length flash flood. Jimmy the Bear. The summer did a photo for fourth with Regal Power. Put itself into calculations for the big ones. Yeah, we, we were pretty... Sizzling return in it heavily, and it's worth remembering that we saw Emissary win this race last year, then win a Geelong Cup and run second in the big one. This was uh, a serious, serious return from a horse that I think needs to be strongly considered as a, a genuine winning chance in both the Caulfield and, and Melbourne Cups. And I don't say that lightly because it's in for an effort, slicing through the field, just as you think it's... He might be in trouble. He rockets home. Third fastest last 200 metres of the entire day. He's... Uh, a legitimate contender for both the Caulfield and Melbourne Cup. Yeah, so he defied the pattern. Six minutes out from the Memsey, snap dancer defeating the late I'm Thunderstruck and Cascadian last year. Behem first group one of the racing season in Victoria. The Stowe Storage Memsey, and it's Mr. Brightside for you, Clint Hutchison. It is any one of the top. With alligator blood, he has just come back a, a lot more furnished and a lot... ...us here, and the three of them at the top of the market are that. They've won some big races amongst them, including Mr. Brightside, clearly the best-backed runner, and the clear-cut favourite for the Memsey Stakes. You know he was terrific. Western Empire, non-conformist and amenable. 950 metres to go. And the front-runner, Ana Visto, by a length and a quarter. Alligator blood got over to the death. Third on the inside as they reach the 800. Princess Grace and Mr. Brightside's forced wide. A length band to snatch A gone. I wish I win. Bankmore Steinem wide. Next, Ozapenko, Duke Decessa, non conformist. Well back as Western Empire and amenable as last. So Anavisto, 600 metres to go. Now starts to saw it up by a length. Alligator blood. Mr. Brightside is three wide, two off the lead and coming on. Princess Grace behind them, needing to get off the fence. And behind them, I wish I win. A gone to the outside, followed by band to snatch. Alligator 
Gator Blood up to Ana Visto, 250 metres to go. Mr. Brightside joining in, Princess Grace behind them, darts up underneath of them, and I wish I wins got out and coming as well. Mr. Brightside up to Alligator Blood at the 100, then I wish I win Princess Grace. Mr. Brightside fends them up and wins again. Mr. Brightside has won it from a photo between I wish I win Princess Grace, then Alligator Blood. Seriously, a terrific Group 1. Amenable behind them, followed by... Contest. We got all that and more. I Wish I, wish I win, win has run enormous. So, so has Princess Grace, Grace coming via the Wink Stakes and Alligator. Blood. Didn't get a lot of favours early in the race, but probably not the normal penalty. Be a little bit wider today. I wish I win came off his back. You think, oh, he could be in trouble here, but he just kept digging in. Okay. And Alligator Blood was beaten, but far from disgraced in fourth. He's kept kicking. We know he's a horse and improves with a run under his belt. He'll head towards the horse's race. Vague imagine. This is a good horse's race and that's a racing cliche but go and have a look at racing.com on the honour roll of the Memzi Stakes. It would stack up against basically any race in Australia the last 20 or 30 years and um, they're the last two on settling. They didn't go overly quickly in the early stages which probably allowed Mr Brightside to sit three wide on speed and still be strong at the finish. Uh, and Mr Bright side joining in princess grace behind them darts up underneath of them and i wish i wins got out and coming as well mr brightside up to alligator blood at the hundred then i wish i win princess grace mr brightside fends them up and wins again mr brightside has won it from a photo between i wish i, I win fully concur uh, do you look at these races um, early and think oh mr brightside might get three wide the trip but do we overplay it particularly in this country we definitely do overplay it, um, depending on the early speed. So... Look at that, Denman, Hello Crown, Exosphere, Astern, and more recently... Uh, a couple, a little bit further down, that have been back. Libertad is one of those. Butch Cassidy has attracted some interest, 11 into $9.50, but the money goes in terms of market order. Cylinder 230, pretty quiet. Number the job in advance of Libertad, then Don Coulion and the white cap. Further back to the favourite cylinder. General salute on a wide path from Chrysler Nadal and militarised last of a bunch field in the run to the rose. And Moravia shows the way from Butch Cassidy breathing down his neck. A length and a half to Don Coulion from Libertad. Cylinders all cluttered up at the moment from General Salute as they race inside the 300 metres. It's Moravia in front from Butch Cassidy. Our cylinder is not out yet. Moravia still in front from Butch Cassidy. Now Nadal is starting to thunder home. Moravia in front from Butch Cassidy. Cylinder's out now. He's charging, going to Moravia. Oh, Cylinder got out of jail to win the run to the rose. Cylinder just edged out Moravia and third between Butch Cassidy and Nadal. Then General Salute, militarised, flashing home. Further back to Libertad. Now's Moravia on the line as Nadal was flashing like Lizzie expected him to do. Butch Cassidy a good bit of tempo in that race as well. Cylinder doing cylinder things here. Would have been very unlucky if he didn't win the race. If he gets out and sprints quickly, have a look at Militarised down the outside. He's the one that I want to take out of the race. Uh, hopefully in a race like a Golden Rose or a Caulfield Guineas, Militarised can draw a barrier and settle a little bit closer. I'll tell you, arguably the best sprinter in Australia resumes and over 80% of turnover is with Kick a Kick. He's back, folks. Want to see an even surface. Um, he'll get the pace on. He's the best horse in the race. And I think he'll... Got the acceleration. Looking down the page there, soft imperatories. Rothfire trims half a point to $5. And the best back to... Now these sprinters heading towards there, in particular, imperatories. We know she won the William Reed. She's on her way to a Moya and also, also a Manica. I wonder if we've got a manual start coming up. We do. I think it was a manual start. They're racing and Giga Kick missed it by a length and a half. Acro Mantula began quickly with seven. Sarah Des and all neck to Acro Mantula. A length and a quarter house the Serenity Sarah Des and they were followed by Rothfire Imperatriz and Giga Kicks getting going from the back of the field. Set a light has gone past one, has gone past two and is only four off the lead coming up to the corner. 400 metres to go. Zoo style from Acro Mantula. Then how's the Serenity? Giga Kick is trying to loop them four and five deep. Followed by Rothfire Imperatriz is going to come the widest into the running terrific race at the 150. Imperatriz has Swept past all of them and has raced up and grabbed the lead from Giga Kick and Rob Farm. What a win this! Imperatriz, a magnificent display, has won by two and a quarter. Roth Fire and Giga. Then how's the Serenity? Giga Kick is trying to loop them four and five deep. Followed by Roth Fire. Imperatriz is going to come the widest into the running. Terrific race at the 150. Imperatriz has swept past all of them and has raced up and grabbed the.
the lead from Giga Kick and Rock Bob. What a win this! Imperatries a magnificent display has won by two and a quarter. Roth Fire and Giga Kick. Wowee! Then came Zoo Style House. Tiaka racing Imperatries. We knew she was a star before today. She's been the winner of five Group One races in her career, and this mare just loves the valley. She's now two from two. Clint, what a performance by a top class mare. Top class mare loved the ride as well. This was as he sat out the back, took his one in the style of a top class horse and Ben track record as well. That was stunning. That was to two point one six and about point length. three off nature strips performance yeah. that is from Imperatries. So I don't know if they were talking. Stunning performance. Uh, of course, the, the big talking point at the start of the race was Gear Kick missing the start. So you know, I was in regards to Gear Kick. Craig Williams put his hand up and blamed pilot error. He, he ran, I think it was 20.89 between the 800s and the 400 on a track record speed first up after missing the start. So hopefully he comes through that run OK. Uh, but have a look at the finish for Imperatories. I wondered whether 1,000 might prove too sharp for her. But... She can uh, go on and win just about anything this spring on the on the back of this. Imperatrice has swept past all of them and has raced up and grabbed the lead from Giga Kick and Rock Ball. What a win this! Imperatrice, a magnificent display. Nothing like hearing Maddie Hill's voice change gears like it did yesterday, and with good reason. And uh, there's still options open after that, so. Uh, we'll concentrate on the Moyer at the moment, and um, yeah, she also... ...food, fee and stakes over the mile. It's a field with a bit of depth this year, Clint. Which way are you leaning? Terrific race. Pick of the yard for me, number 13, Attrition. you got six, fifth Attrition, a second up there, but it's about Globe here. Yeah, phenomenal stuff here for the fee in the feature race. Uh, he was drifting uh, through most of the day in the market. Globe has got the box seat, a length and a half to two Tuvalu. A length Goldman pounding Attrition, and then came Pinstrom. Forgot UL Bodegon. Luna Flair is third last, and then came Alaskan God, and Virtuous Circle is last of all. Deny Knowledge puts the foot down on the outside of Sava 2 XL, and they run this bit pretty hard at the 650, two and a half lengths to Globe. Tuvalu has slid up on the outside of the favourite and run on by it for now. They were followed by Goldman. Pinstriped is out deeper than Attrition. Pounding, trying to extricate off the fence. I think Globe's under enormous pressure here. Then Forgot UL Bodegon. Deny Knowledge went to the front with 300 metres to go, but Tuvalu now shades it. Pinstriped is right there. Under pressure, Sava 2XL boxes on and then came Attrition. Tuvalu and Pinstriped up the middle of the track at the 150. Tuvalu and Pinstripe pounding runs on, then Attrition. Pinstriped up to Tuvalu. Pinstripe just in front. Attrition with a late dive. Pinstripe. Pinstripe has won it. Pinstripe wins from Attrition. Tuvalu pounding. Then Alaskan. God, what a run. They were followed next by... Pinstripe adds a Group 2 Fian Stakes win to his C.S. Hayes win that he picked up as a three-year-old. He's always been a horse that's promised a lot and he's delivered today at Mooney Valley. He seems to have a liking from the... Had a $15,000 bet on her at 3.30, so they're certainly keen. Kamochi, second elect, just easing a touch now at 3.70 up from 3.60 this morning, but Tiz Invincible firms again into 3.20. She's all the rage. Into 3.20, she's all the rage. Tropical Squall, of them. So as you mentioned, Bruce, the top two certainly all the rage, but Tiz Invincible looks very... Uh... And Amelia, Tropical Squall, at a pretty steady tempo leads here from Miss Charlene, and Kamachi goes to third in a three-wide position. Autumn Ballet, fourth defence, a length off to Tiz Invincible. Just being babysat there by August Bloom, the outside. Zardozzi back on the rail, then came Mumbai Muse, and Summer Loving as they turn, and Tropical Squall ups the ante now. The stable mate Autumn Ballet's off the fence, giving chase. Kamachi still there. Up on the inside now, Tis Invincible in restricted room. It's Tropical Squall, just the leader. Tis Invincible off the fence. Kamachi the outside. It's game on in the T-Rows. And Tis Invincible takes the lead from Kamachi. Tis Invincible, two lengths clear from Kamachi. Tropical Squall and Tis Invincible makes it three out of three this preparation. A dominant win over Kamachi. Tropical Squall third there in the T-Rows. A gap back to the rest. French in... James, but she was so dominant at the end. Yeah, she's obviously the best filly in her generation up here in Sydney, and that performance was sensational. She obviously... This particular trophy will grow in stature. It's worth a million dollars today. 
We're absolutely favourite. Our favourite is now Zaki. All the right late money is coming for him. And Fangirl, uh-oh, she's lay of the day. So she's out to 350 now from 290, albeit she's... Going global, the American mayor lead to the 800 metres by two lengths on the favourite Zaki. Hinged into a clear third. Then think it over in fourth on the rails from Zarek. Further back to my Oberon, then came Diamol. Hieronymus puts Huya Mal into a three-wide position to creep closer. Fangirl all cluttered up on the fence from Arapaho and Fireburn's last of all. Going global at the 500 metres, coasting along in the lead by a length on Zaki. Two lengths away then. Two think it over, starting to come into the race. Nash about to come off heels. Hasn't done so yet. Then Zarek. My Oberon's creeping into the race. But Zaki, Chad Schofield said go. Zaki races, two lengths clear. Think it over. Now he gets off heels. It's Zaki a length in front. Think it over's coming. Zaki in front. Think it over. Be lifted by Nash. Yes, got up. Think it over. Nailed Zaki right on the line. I think my Oberon third from Zarek, Huya Mallon, Fangirl, then going global. Is that J-Mac and Katie to see these two great warriors? What have we got? We've got an eight-year-old and a nine-year-old stride for stride in the last hundred metres. That was up to the last little bit, but got the measure of them late. And what a training performance from Kerry Parker to get this horse back after such a long time off. And this preparation, he's done such a marvellous... Gap to Fangirl back in third. We'll see all those horses you'd imagine. Simple as that, Jay, man. Absolutely. You can see a few winners there from the Everest. So this is definitely a key lead up and um, whoever... Out in secret here, guys, she's got almost 50% of the hold. The punters are very keen on her, but the tab keen to let you on. She's at that $3 quote now, out from two seventy. but don't let the price fool you. They're dangling the carrot. Casino Lord back last of all. Josh Parr's got the front and over pass by three quarters to a Thelric. Remark very well positioned third. A length into Hawaii 5-0. Private eye seeing plenty of daylight. So's lost and running. Wanda's not just back on the rails from in secret. A bit cluttered up coming to the turn from ruthless Dame Marzubel back from rocketing buying Casino Lords. Last of all, 375 to go. Overpass in front from Athelry. Private eye on the outside of Hawaii 5-0. Remark's trying to come off the fence. Inside the 200 overpass still the leader. Boy, Private Eye, he's still coming the outside. Overpass from Private Eye. One is not just late on the scene. Private Eye going to overpass. Bob of the head to the eye. Private Eye, I'd say he's got there. Give it to Private Eye, a half head to overpass. One is not just charging into third. Then came Remark from in secret. Further back, Hawaii. It's the amount of ground. Yeah, I mean, Private Eye was, was all on as he was giving him really. Him get way out of his ground and then rocket over the top. The shorts will. Talk about don't forget about Private Eye. Joe mm. Pride is going to go to the Everest with a two-pronged attack. He's going to have think about it. And this guy who we remember, he came here last year and announced himself as a really good sprinter. He'd already got the business done out to 16. Craig Williams, well, he's been under a bit of pressure in the limelight recently uh, with the loss of the ride on Giga Kick. He rides the favourite, the heavily backed favourite, Mr Brightside. Come on, Willow, get a favourite up for the punters. He's drawn uh, back. He tries to become the first horse in nine years to do the Memsey Maccabi Diva Double at Group 1 level and go on. In the, in the yard, I've gone with Alligator Blood on top. and that... Mr Brightside to continue his winning merry ways to go three from three this preparation. You know he loves Fleming. Alligator Blood's had it soft up front at the 900 metres. Three quarters of a length to Princess Grace. A length and a half to Mr Brightside. Ozopenko racing together. A length and a half Francesco Gardi. A gone and Spanish mission. That's the order in the Group 1 at the 700 metres. It's Alligator Blood, Damien Oliver looking to win the race for the sixth time. Princess Grace just getting a bit closer now. Mr Brightside's a length and a half off those from Ozopenko. Francesco Gardi three deep and then came Aegon Spanish Mission. Around the turn at the 450 and it's Alligator Blood held together. Princess Grace not far away, a neck away. Mr Brightside tanking up a length away. It's the race we wanted. 300 to go. Alligator Blood lets down now. Mr Brightside Williams hasn't moved. Alligator Blood joins Joined by Mr. Brightside, who lets rip at the 150. Mr. Brightside, three quarters a length, alligator blood, and comes clear. Mr. Brightside, a mile marble. What a performance. Won it by a length and a half, alligator blood. Ozopenko, and then came Princess Grace. Next. We have a winner of a Memsey and Maccabi Diva in the same spring for the first time in nine years. Dissident in 2014. Mr. Brightside, with yet another Group 1, takes his prize money north of $9 million. He is clear.
what speed you go, slow or fast, Mr. Brightside's going to always be there. He gets himself a well-deserved Group 1 at headquarters. What to build out his glittering CV. <coughs> his fourth Group 1 it now sits alongside, of course, his two Doncasters, his last start victory in the Memsey Stakes. He's the first horse since. But this was a race run really slowly. Alligator Blood, first 800 metres, thanks to the Daily Sectionals time. It's going to be about 14 lengths slower than average. So... Um, the game plan you can tell there is cement to the fact that this horse just keeps coming back better. Fastest last 200 of the day, so um, he's just... It was like a troll, and even Craig Williams said after it, it's the easiest Group 1 I've ever won. 74th Group 1 yesterday, and to be tough like he is, so um, I think he'll be a bit closer at 2,000 metres in the Cox Plate this year. Hopefully he draws a gate, and... Um, mm. He's right in the mix. Do you? Some 6,000, multiple bets of 5,000 as well, all on the race favourites. Simon Miller combining here with Damien Lane. See you in heaven, the South Aussie. To grab the let's alone. I think at the price is much more than anything else. I think it's... Said around the yard, she's uh, a horse that um, just looks like she knows everyone's watching her. Cut favourite here and best back. But we are playing mo uh, multiples, exotics, if you like there, folks. Your trifectas, your quinellas and your exotics. With Frida in that group of horses, cast wide. And then came Elusive Express and Papali. Amelia's Jewel has the back of cast. Is about three back on that three wide train. And has about eight lengths to pick up from Papillon Club and Shuffle Dancer. Wrote to Arataki into the running at the 450 from Pride of Jenny. Tora Jean wants to lug out. Life lessens the outside. Our patroness is done. Starting back over on the far side. Where's Amelia's Jewel? Lane hasn't pushed the button yet. And she's running on. Life lessons at the clock tower took the front. Here's Amelia's Jewel about to let down hands and heels. Amelia's Jewel up to Life Lessons who fights. Amelia's Jewel a neck, a half Life Lessons. Too good. Too good. Amelia's Jewel, a length Life Lessons. Third in the race, El Patroness. They were followed by a photo car. See you in heaven. Pride of Jenny next. And then came Pappy on club. 40 minutes ago, the other thing we wanted to see was Amelia's Jewel, who was thundered through our television. Starting point four, and when he had moved on straightening, I was like, well, this is this is an easy watch. You know, without being arrogant, I was like, well, you know, yeah. Say, because... I did say it felt like I was in second gear when I got to life lessons and she got a half length in front and just went to put the cue in the rack. So she's still... It was, watch, you know, this is one... The data will tell you one thing, this is one for the eyes. Have a look at how she does it. Amelia's Jewel. Lane hasn't pushed the button yet and she's running on. Life lessons at the clock tower took the front. Here's Amelia's Jewel about to let down hands and heels. Amelia's Jewel up to life lessons who fights. Amelia's Jewel a neck, a half life lessons. Too good. Too good! Amelia's Jewel Elite Life Lessons. Third in the so race. So nothing. The data that she was producing over there and the times that she was producing, she is, she is a freak, this horse. She, and, and, and she is the one. We, we can talk about Mr Brightside and we can talk about Think It Over and Zaki, but she is the one that we can build a brand on for a spring carnival, an autumn carnival, whatever you like. The, the... Yeah, 2.45, your favourite. Best, uh, best supported here by far is Benedetta, but no, nice to see Star Patel. He, he tightens up a little bit off his hot trial on that little throat tie-up. And King of Spa... Star Tonte is at the end of the field. Benedetta has about three behind her. 600 metres to go. Najem Sahail by itself over on the flat side. Led from Snapper Star Patrol and their four lengths, King of Sparta. Followed by Benedetta, Charterhouse, Zutori. It's our time. Mince moment and Star Tonte's. 350 metres to go. Najem Sahail with Star Patrol. Their worlds apart. Star Patrol hits the front and then came Benedetta and behind them King of Sparta, Star Patrol 150 metres to go, King of Sparta is finishing hard, Star Patrol King of Sparta is trying to mow it down with Benedetta, still Star Patrol 50 metres to go, King of Sparta is going to have a crack late with Benedetta photo finish, Star Patrol Star Patrol beat King of Sparta Benedetta, then came a gap to Charterhouse with Zutori mince moment, it's giving them some thrills here at times with his performances, but it just hasn't clicked for him on the big day so far in his career. He was topsy comeback, better horse for it. Great run, King of Sparta. Benedetta was flashing late, but just simply left with too much work to do. Yeah, this, yeah, this was a, a high-pressure contest. And James Hale, obviously, who was out by... Gee, she's a good mare. The, the top four Group 1 winners in this race, so yeah. she's a good mare. And she looked after beat here, particularly with a kind draw. The one they wanted to have a set against was Zoo Gotcha, and they've stood by their word there. $2.80 out to $4.60, and I can... Diamond Dealers running them along. At the 7.50, two and a half in front now to Banana Queen. 
a couple off to Zoo Gotcha on the outside of Espiona, a length and a half now to Etishio, then so dazzling from She's a Belter, More Secret sees them all, eight lengths away, so Diamond Dealer swings the corner in front, three in front to Banana Queen, now Espiona's coming off heels, she's starting to give chase, so Gotcha can't do much more, three lengths away to Etishio, is putting in a good challenge, Diamond Dealer being joined by Espiona, she really wants to lay in, Nash trying to straighten her up, as she stormed two lengths clear now from a tissue charging home, but it's Espiona clearing the golden pendant. Espiona the favourite, too good beat a tissue. Banana Queen third, then came Diamond Dealer, more secret, Zoo gotcha. Head goes on the side again today, you picked it perfectly, but she is building a big record now, isn't she? Yeah, absolutely, and, and that was a lovely stepping stone towards something bigger today, but she put him away nicely, still probably one with... The Teal's Group 1 for three-year-olds changed its name to the Golden Rose in 2003 and has kept that name ever since. We have a new favourite in this one, King Colorado, but interestingly enough, and all I can do is give you the tab picture, it's the fifth best-backed runner in the race with us, so clearly other factors dragging that price in. $4.20 and favourite. Cylinder on the second line at $4.40, best-backed with us. Shinzo at $6, Militarise at $6.50, and even Charmstone's holding more money than King Colorado. Beyond that... Shinzo's been taken back to last. It's snapped back at odds, showing the way a half on Butch Cassidy. Moravia takes the sit-in third, a half off the outside to end cap, well positioned. Two lengths to the filly, Charmstone. Uh, Cylinder after the good start, couldn't cross them, and now Cylinder's caught three wide on the outside of Don Corleone. Further back than a militarised general salute, King Colorado well back, together with Nadal the fence, and Shinzo will have to come wider. Snap back leads at the 500 metres from Butch Cassidy, end cap pulling three wide, then Charmstone sliding into fourth. Further back to Cylinder with a back to follow. Uh, Moravia trying to come off heels at the three. 50 now they're stretched across the track snap back joined by Butch Cassidy and in cap cylinder starting to hit top gear Moravia hasn't got much room nor Charmstone end cap hits a narrow lead at the 150 end cap from Butch Cassidy cylinder hitting the line hard end cap cylinder militarized late oh barnstorming finish by militarized the late attack Diving and I think at the 350 now they're stretched across the track. Snap back joined by Butch Cassidy and in cap cylinder starting to hit top gear. Moravia hasn't got much room nor Charmstone. End cap hits a narrow lead at the 150. End cap from Butch Cassidy. Cylinder hitting the line hard. End cap cylinder militarized late. Oh, barnstorming finish by militarized. The late attack diving and I think he got there in the golden rose from cylinder and in cap. Oh, followed by Butch Cassidy. Mar it was an absolute thriller. And Joe has been able to bring Militarise home. He's won three Group 1s, this colt. The son of Dundee. Joe gets a set. Ultimate professional of a horse as well. Ultimate professional of a horse as well. Do you push forward to a guineas? Um, we certainly we certainly will be talking about a guineas for sure. Push forward to something even bigger than that in a Cox Plate. Um, who knows? Who knows? Dreams are um, dreams happen on a race course, that's for sure. So, one step. Just a cla class colt with a beautiful action. Good mind. Cylinder was just enormous in third base. Absolutely enormous. Sydney, this is a crucial pointer, as we know, on an annual basis to the Caulfield Guineas. And have a look at Joe Moreira find his way off the back of Cylinder here in the China Horse Club colours and barge his way through to give Chris Waller his third Golden Rose. Zoo Star, the Autumn Sun, and now Militarise. Two group ones as a two-year-old. Outstanding performance here. I think for many, Ben, he's the horse to beat in the Caulfield Guineas. Oh, I think he has to be. Um, yeah, thanks to Daily Sectionals. Highest rating performance of the day there. Um, with a you know, 3.8 above me there. Um, with a you know, 3.8 above standard ahead of Espiona, who's produced a really... ...now, and it's all about the Caulfield Guineas. Prelude for these three-year-olds in the top two in the market, dominating. Have a look at Stepati. He's uh, unbeaten. His return at Mooney Valley was outstanding. V8. They don't end there, Ben. It's Stepati's toughest test, but he's four from four and he's yet to be challenged, so I've got no reason... There's not much knocking him. He's got the most brilliant temperament for a... Picking out to that $3 mark, he hit $2.90 and then trims up a little again into $2.00. 
80. Next to length, Southport Tycoons to party three deep. Two lengths to She Light and last little bros. 800 metres to run. It's Rock Empire on the inside of Some People Call Me. Two and a half to V8 with a lovely run. A length away, centre fire. And then came Prince Zero, Southport Tycoon. Stapati is seven off the lead, tracked by She Light. Little Bros last approaching the turn. 500 to go. Rock Empire just in front of Some People Call Me. A length and a half to V8, who's about to ease three wide. Next in the field is Centre by stoked up behind those horses from Southport Tycoon. Prince Zero. Stapati is the widest with a lot to do. Rock Empire at the 250 from Centre Fi on the outside. Southport Tycoon is getting out as well. Centre Fi strikes the front at the 150. Southport Tycoon. She lighted Stapati from nowhere. It's going to be a big finish. They hit the lights. Stapati. Stapati has got up to win it. Has picked itself off the canvas and has won the race from a photo. Centre Fi Southport Tycoon and She Light. Haven't we got a fantastic guineas in a few weeks? Rock Empire. Up and about. Stapati makes it a perfect five from five in his career so far. He adds a second stakes win here, adding a Caulfield Guinea is via Stefani. Johnny, can Where We'd had a few winners on pace and they went, they overdid things up front, I think. They've gone nearly five lengths faster than average for the first section in this race, thanks to Daily Sectional, so it's a good speed. And have a look at Stepati. So, John Allen, initially, yeah, he's recognised they're going quickly, so he wants to take a sit, but then he's been caught... It wasn't... Yeah, I thought it was a terrific effort. Uh, he's just a very good horse. Every time he's being asked for an effort, he responds to it. Um... The Gilfield Guineas, if he draws a barrier, sits just in behind the leaders, gets the softest run. What's to say he doesn't just let down with a, a brilliant turn of foot and, and put the race away where, while a horse like Militarise, who's probably going to start favourite, is out the back winding up, charging home. But Stapati might... Victories yesterday. It's now Stapati on the second line of betting, currently at $3.80. Militarise all the way down to three thirty. The only other runner in... Let's go to race eight now, shall we, and clean a little bit of housekeeping up here. $3.50 into three thirty is floating artist. He's the popular the second leg of the quaddy race eight here punters into 290 as i talk to you uh, floating artist mark zara from that tricky barrier at 10. thousand meters to go goldman slowed it up three quarters of a length in front of milford a length and a quarter uncle brin floating artist barkley square fifth three wide exposed regal power between horses rio next the inner then bear story alaskan god in the second group out to wider on the track hustle a war with also he's a shocker to shan sweet jr hit a flat spot then the summit emma Virtuous Circle and Shiraz coming up to the turn. 500 to go. It's Goldman, Milford, Barkley Square, Satellite after being on a wide run. Floating artist hooking out deeper. Uncle Bryn has held up on the fence. Then Regal Power, Alaskan Gods trying to extricate out too. Then Bear Story and the Summit. Barkley Square and Uncle Bryn go for home together. At the 250, it's Uncle Bryn by a length and a half. Barkley Square. Then came Floating Artist, Goldman, Emissary, Alaskan God. Uncle Bryn, 100 metres to go, is surging away. Uncle Bryn second in the race last year, first today. Floating out of second, Alaskan God third, photo fourth, Barkley Square, or Emma. Well, they've perhaps always felt Trent Busson and Natalie Young that they had a Caulfield Cup horse in hand with Uncle Bryn. He's been allotted 51 kilos in the great race and he qualifies with a performance. And what a wonderful performance to take out the MRC Foundation Cup. Well, we know he's a very talented racehorse on his day, and he's shown us all of that talent. This was the best of Uncle Brian. He's... It's the feature. It's all about the Underwood Stakes. Alligator blood, of course. He is the uh, champion in this race at Wait for Rage. He's the reigning champion of the Underwood from last year when it was raced at San... Day, uh, she's got a little bit... Indeed, I'm with Tuvalu at the price. I think third up, he might be ready to peak now. He knows... Um, so I'm with the 14 ahead of the 2 and the 8. Expect outside of that, uh, if you're looking for roughies, and right you are, really good money, sharp money coming in for right you are. The 21... Kerr, let it out by a length and a half, Alligator blood. Two lengths, Tuvalu Mawunga. Three lengths away, Lindemann. Followed by Bankmore, right you are. Jewess as they spread. Then came non-conformist, Sulcum, Vow and Declare. A length and a half without a fight, attrition. Four lengths, Lunar Flare, Smoke and Romans. So it's Alan Kerr. 500 metres to go, is trying to stretch them. Alligator Blood's a length and a half away. Tuvalu still coming on. Then came Mawunga. Next in the field, Lindemann, Bankmore, right you are to the outside from Jewess without a fight a long way back. Alan Kerr. 
at the 300, grabbed by Alligator Blood. Tuvalu trying to go with him. A gap, Lindemann, Jewis, right you are, and Stolcom from a long way back. Alligator Blood at the 150 extended. A length in front of Tuvalu and Jewis. But it's Alligator Blood clear, looking to go back to back. His mighty heart gets him there. Alligator Blood's won it. Tuvalu second, Jewis third, Stolcom fourth. Then right you are, and next without a fight, and non-conformist, Lindemann and Alan Kerr. And hopefully to come, Damien Oliver gets it done for Gay Waterhouse and Adrian Bott. Alligator Blood becomes Alligator Blood becomes the 13th horse to win two underwoods, the first since the champion in Northerly in 2001 and 2002 to go back to... Damien Oliver's third underwood yields him his... One, Oliver's third underwood yields him his 125th domestic group one. He's 120... He's 129. Would have done such a tremendous job with... Alli tremendous job with Alligator Blood, who is now a six-time group winner. Group one winner. There are cup trials of plenty. Group one winner. There are... Got out and got rolling and was going along at a nice, even, genuine speed uh, once he did get out and into the clear. And Damien Oliver then just allowed Alligator Blood to, to stride around. And I think it was probably outside of... Alan Kerr, uh, one out, one back, was back from a Caulfield Cup perspective. Jewess in the orange cap, blue colours, back on the fence midfield. Uh, behind her, Sulcum, I thought, was terrific. And then trailing Sulcum without a fight was also very, very good. There are a few that... Um... This spring in our wait for age ranks with Mr Brightside and Alligator Blood. Geldings who are getting a little bit, not long in the tooth, but they've certainly got experience under their belt now. Um, I thought this race was through from a Caulfield Cup perspective. Without a fight, run the eighth fastest last 200 metres of the day on a, a terrific day of racing. He was... Often so, the Caulfield Cup, $8 the field. Francesco Gardi now a joint favourite with without a fight at that quote. Sulcum, a $9 chance, then double figures or... Um, yeah, both of them without a fight and Sulcum were outstanding, so they'd probably be my two. I've been waiting for the entire evening to see Amelia's jewel. Here she is in the stock stakes. She's second up. She won a, a similar sort of a Group 2 content of her. Everything is easing except for two horses that are holding their price. And the first one is Deny Knowledge from Greg Ding. And we've got Amelia's jewel, who is $1.28. She's the one... ...is last. Pride of Jenny is the bunny to chase as they run off the back section at the 800 metres. It's been solid. Two and a half Amelia's jewel. A length and a half Sioni Party Princess. A length and a quarter to deny knowledge. Two lengths, Papali, then Steinem, a fair receiver. Well back in the field, thought-provoking, and Papillon Club with a lot to do. Pride of Jenny, 550 metres to go, stretches them now, niggled. Two and a half, Amelia's Jewel, who's creeping closer. Then came Sione as they come to the turn. Deny knowledge in fourth from Party Princess, Papali, Steinem, Papillon Club, thought-provoking, and a fair receiver. Pride of Jenny under the whip around the corner of the 200. Amelia's Jewel stoked up to run her down into the straight at the 150. Pride of Jenny, a half length. Amelia's Jewel moves up on the outside, takes Pride of Jenny, is coming clear. Great pipe opener. Bring on the Cox Plate. Amelia's Jewel, three quarters of a length. Pride of Jenny, three lengths to nine knowledge party. Princess Sione, followed by... Payne was super soft on her. He just did enough to win. He had the perfect way of celebrating Simon Miller. There you go, job done. She seems to do it all so easily. That was impressive. She just continues. To... Yeah, um, it wasn't that easy. <laughs> I had to ask her for a bit, a bit of an effort. Pride of Jenny made a real race of it and um, still got a bit more to come, I think. So, yeah, exciting time. Well, Thanks. Simon Miller, congratulations. Uh, she takes the track record along with her, if you don't mind, around Mooney Valley. And there's been the odd good... I um, was unaware of that, so that's... Uh... Yeah, she just looked like she was doing it easy, didn't she? So um, when we were outside the leader, I thought, see, Frosty, um, tough. Like, if it was a track record, then clearly uh, she can absorb pressure. And uh, Gino used to always say to me that, and, and he's right. A short price favourite, will we see something similar in the next event, which is the Group 1 Moya Stakes. And Imperatriz is, again, a short priced favourite. She was obviously... Imperatriz. I think she's uh, probably the price many would have assessed her at or judged that she'd... The yard, and as I said, mentally, she's just returned $1.65, and she hasn't. There um, isn't... There's not like there's plenty of money for her, but there's absolutely nothing against her either. Still one. Yeah, he's just such a tough horse, Buffering. He was a mighty, mighty horse. There's a few elements. James, and they were followed by Generation Imperatrice and Two and a Half the Inferno. Through the gap of the 650, it's Zoo-style by a neck, Acromantula, 
Fowler, Alethan Okuda as Fura and Rothfire, followed by Uncommon James Generation. Imperatrice is about to peel three and four deep, five off the lead, and back behind those, the Inferno. Zoo style Acromantula as Fura made a line of three before the corner. Then Rothfire, Imperatrice is making her bid as Fura around the turn at the 150. Let a length and a half. Imperatrice is flying now as Fura at the 50. Imperatrice has got her and raced on by. Imperatrice by a length as Fura second. Uncommon James third. Then the Inferno, Rothfire. Next in the field was Zeus, but she was brilliant again. A sprinting star. It's as simple as that. Sustained speed. She runs 56-47. She breaks the track record over a 1,000 metres here at the Valley. It was her track record. She goes quicker again. She might just be a 1,000 metre gun. She goes past us for... In the champion sprint. Addo in the champion sprint, yeah. OK, so staying in Victoria despite... Doesn't matter what sort of money you're offered elsewhere, staying in Victoria? No, the mayor's so happy here, yeah. and I don't see any sense in putting her on a float. Um, out of this race, and think about it, is a pretty short price favourite, pretty well back too. A dollar eighty-five, two dollars thirty was the open, uh, but that horse has just been hammered. Uh, so we're talking six of them there, and Jamie Cars found the front on lost and running by length on Zapatero. Athelric didn't get across. It's caught three wide at the moment. Followed then by Think About It, pushing through on the inside of Alcohol Free. Two lengths to Bella Nipatina from Hawaii Five Ale. Two lengths last is Cote. Lost and running, really looking to bounce back to. Today. Led around the corner from Zapateo Athelric. Think about it, travels well. Clippin and eyeing off a rails run and getting it pretty quickly now. Alcohol free and restricted room. And Hawaii 5 0 is running on really well down the outside. Think about it, went up the inside to join Zapateo. Hawaii 5 0 wide out. And then Bella Nipatina running on. It's Think About It all out. Hawaii 5 0. Think about it. Hawaii 5 0 lunges. Oh, close here. Did the favourite hang on? Think about it. Maybe a nose to Hawaii 5 0. Bella Nipatina third, followed by alcohol. Won an eighth consecutive race to keep Sam Clippelin's perfect record on the horse. He's only been beaten once. They've locked horns before in a Stradbroke, haven't they? Bill and comes. Here we go. Bobbing, bobbing, bobbing. Inside, inside, inside. I uh, yep. got it. So think about it. We'll get it. And gets it. With Bella Nip makes it eight consecutive wins. You know, it's interesting, though, you take Hawaii 5 -0. You know, it's interesting, though, you take Hawaii 5 -0. There's a deal to be done on a slot, but there's also the Golden Eagle, which is a very lucrative race. One that we're going to tell you all about now. Well, $7 the field. That's when you know you've got a quality Group 1 Ramwick mile. Hope in your heart at $7 is our favourite. And good luck to Kerry Parker and the team. He's $50 to $9 today. The money's dried up a touch at $10. Kovalika at $10. And then Redina and Co at 10 or more. Nothing at longer odds that's really been spec. We're on the outside of political debate. So Golden Mile leads them up down the side. And the hands of Blake Shin narrowly from Williamsburg. Redina gets a great run on the rails and going forward now is Nugget. Oliver couldn't get in so he said let's go and the favourite Nugget now moves up on the outside of Golden Mile a long way from home. Two lengths to Williamsburg third followed by Redina staying put on the rails from going global the outside. Two lengths then to Communist followed by Barbie's Fox pounding out deep hoping your heart being scrubbed up by Williams trying to get into it as they come around the home corner now and Golden Mile comes back on Nugget. Golden Mile a length and a half on Nugget followed by Williamsburg, Redina getting a gap. Further back to Kovalika, working into the clear. Hope in your heart coming down the outside together with Mo Ibron, but Golden Mile has a good lead. Inside the 150, Golden Mile two in front. Redina, Democracy Manifest charging home. Golden Mile in front from Redina. Kovalika wide out. Redina, Redina just won it, I'd say, from Kovalika. Golden Mile. Then came Barbie's Fox, Democracy Manifest, the inevitable. And, and then they came and swept, and as Chris Quinella did, I think so, I think so, but the the thing about Golden Mile is he got into a lovely uh, spot, not to take anything away from Cathy O'Hara, she is a journeyman of a, of a jockey and she goes everywhere in New South Wales, she fully deserves it. Nice congratulations, this preparation to now win an Epsom and nice congratulations there from James Cummings, wow he's really... And pretty fitting result. Amazing. The put back runner in this race. Come on, what's down the page? Uh, Poifik, Nadachi, that.
Corner is last. Amazonian Lass kept them running before the corner with 650 metres to go by two lengths of Prilly and Adachi. They were followed by as they come to the corner Dolphin Skin on the inside as they run the bend from Tiatar to Sonic Booms. Dozy is off the rails and would spot the lead about six at this point. Then to Sonic Boom presenting to the middle. Legacy's trying to wind up in the red jacket from a long way back. Aprilia chasing down Amazonian Lass. Two lengths Nadachi followed by Zardozzi into the clear from Sonic Boom and then came Legacy. Still Amazonian Lass at the 200 metres giving resistance. Now Aprilia and Zardozzi pick her up in particular Zardozzi in plenty of air today. Took the front and Zardozzi won it. Zardozzi a length and a half of Aprilia Amazonian Lass Nadachi. They were followed next in the field. James Cummings, Godolphin and Dali. They just simply had to let Zardosi bowl around again because she didn't see a hell of a lot of daylight last Sunday at Hillside. That race to the Turnbull Stakes. It's all about Romantic Warrior. 75% of turnover is with the Hong Kong champ. Wowee. Uh, 220. Gold trip. Markets open. Push for him. And gold trip. Markets open. $27 into 15, 12 and 13. Split futures because if Romantic win, Romantic Warrior wins today at 2.35 at the sports bet. Um... Presence of Hong Kong star Romantic Warrior. Yeah, I think if he brings his best, he's going to be very hard to beat. Oh, so pink. Gold trip on top from the yard. The two loved his parade today. I think he's come on really nicely since his first up run. He looked outstanding in the coat and he's just a consummate professional. Waller's 40. They're backing Sulcum to beat him here. Chris Waller's got the two in it there at the top of the market. Uh, second and fair on the rails. Well back in the field is Barkley square and last of all is gold trip as they reach the 1000 marker and well back in the running as well as El Botagon so Bankmore tried to slow it up but West Wind Blows continues that move around them Smoke and Romans is a length away in third as they approach the 800 Ozapenko fourth and then Uncle Bryn and Romantic Warrior shuffled back to sixth four off the lead a length away Spanish Mission and then came Right You Are Emissary the Rails a length Francesco Gardi and then came Selkham Duke de Cesar El Botagon well back Barkley Square, Gold Trip and Luna Flair as they run for the money in the Turnbull. 5.50 out. Bankmore tried to saw away from them. A length and a half west wind blows Uncle Bryn. They were followed by Ozapenko presenting. Romantic Warrior brought towards the middle of the track. McDonald hasn't moved yet. 350 to go. Ozapenko up to west wind blows. Romantic Warrior and here's Gold Trip, the Melbourne Cup winner, storming down the outside at the 200. Gold Trip runs on by. Two three legs, West Wind blows and Sulcum, but it's all gold trip. Gold trip has bolted in the Turnbull. West Wind blows second, Sulcum third, and Romantic Warrior four. Towards the middle of the track, McDonald hasn't moved yet. 350 to go. Ozapenko up to West Wind blows. Romantic Warrior, and here's gold trip. The Melbourne Cup winner storming down the outside at the 200. Gold trip runs on by. Two legs, three legs. West Wind blows and Sulcum, but it's all gold trip. Gold Trip has bolted in the Turnbull. West Wind blows second, Sulcum third, and Romantic Warrior four. They were followed next in the field by Luna Flair and Spanish Mission. One of the more spectacular performances we've seen to win the Turnbull Stakes. The 76th edition goes the way of last year's Melbourne Cup winner, Gold Trip, at a big price if you're playing in the World Pool Totes. He's got 58.5 kilos in the Caulfield Cup. They're prepared to target... Unbelievable, I'm tingling. <laughs> I can't believe you won like that. What a win. <laughs> yeah, we were so... Gold Trips won the 2023 edition. Can you believe what you've just seen? Oh, that, um, that really hits you going, doesn't it? Jeez, uh, he, he, he put the writing on the wall with his, his strapper and out here and wasn't allowed to run in a cox plate. In some respects, been a blessing. Uh, well, I'd say he'd probably have another cost plate on the table, so I don't think so. Um, but, uh, look, he's here. Yeah, I just can't thank the team enough. Super. And uh, it's probably his best win, um, if you can say that, uh, for a Melbourne Cup winner. But uh, it... Of star horses in the 76 editions of this race to win a Melbourne Cup and come back and win a Turnbull. We're talking Doremus... Maccabi Diva, efficient no less. This was an incredible performance. It was indeed, and I sort of was doubting him. Love the run of West Wind Blows, so he'll drop in weight in the Caulfield Cup. It's his target, gets up in, in, in distance. Um, Sulcum is, um, is ticking along beautifully. Keep an eye on Spanish. So 
He's three Flemington runs in his career so far. Fifth in this race last year with 54 and a half kilos. The Melbourne Cup off the back of that. And then, of course, yesterday's performance. And now... Oh, wait. I think they have to go to a Caulfield Cup. It's, in mm. my opinion, the best race for him. Um, it's tough. And um, they've got him going super. It's the best he's ever looked. Uh, Jay Nival. Yeah, it's James Weldon. Well, we're the, just living in the yard. Of the yard was <laughs> Can you do blame that one? Can you do and winning Group Ones for fun? I mean, that was that was a dominant display. You look at the the field behind, and you say, well, what what's going to beat him wherever he steps out next? Home. And and if he's healthy and well, why couldn't he run in all three? Well, it, it just last early and it was on pace. West Wind blows, I think, was enormous. Yep. Uh, in the nicest way possible, I think. Jay Spencer would have liked his time again there. He couldn't find a spot. Yeah. So the horse we haven't spoken about is the favourite going into it, which the, the whole talk in the build-up to the race was all about Romantic Warrior. If he turns up keen early, James McDonald reported that uh, yeah, post-race, he'll come right on for it. He's still happy with how he is. What did you make of the performance? Amazing. Come on, Sam, pick up the game. Get it up there when he mentions it. Um, yeah, look, his favourite Sulcum or equal favourite with West Wind blows off the back of yesterday. Without a fight, $7.00. Break a guinea. That's, the, that's the horse I want to be on, Militarise. Yeah, right now, that's the uh, horse I want to be on. very exciting. Yeah. Militarise and what, what do we know about Victoria Rose? So $38 million in total in prize money with this single race with a record $20 million. It's hard to get your head around, isn't it? There's the breakdown. $7 million takes your breath away. There's a little price. bit more to it, though, of course. Betting for 12 months and we still don't know who's going to jump favourite. That's when you know you've got a very even race and it certainly is that, the 2023 edition of the Tab Everest. I think about it. Is $4.60 favourite at this stage. I wish I win who has been favourite for probably well, the past month or so since news... In regards to 50, Hawaii $11, and then Espiona $16. One of not Probably close to 50,000 people, they say there wasn't a ticket left. <laughs> Nothing I have ever experienced on a racetrack. The most beautiful part. Alcohol free. Presses on. Alcohol free. Sits outside overpass. Think about it. Goes to third. Cylinder fourth. And back to fifth. Private eye. There followed by Espiona. I wish I win. Buried midfield. Hawaii 5 0 deep out from Shinzo. Buenos Notches. Mazu. And in secret settles back. Last of all. 600 to go. Overpass takes the lead now. A half on alcohol free. Cylinder box seats third. Inside the favourite. Think about it. Then came Private Eye on a three-wide path. I wish I went back on the inside looking for room as they come around the corner now. And the leader is over past. Alcohol free dropped off. Cylinder comes off the fence. Think about it. Strides up. Private Eye. Espiona trying to work into the clear. I wish I went running behind them. He needs room as Think About It takes the lead narrowly. Think about it from Cylinder. Private Eye. I wish I win. Think about it in front from I wish I win. Think about it. Secret rattling home, then cylinder from Espiona. Further back to Mounted. He's done it. He has. He's won nine consecutive races. He's only been beaten once. He's the most remarkable story. When Sam Clipperton first rode him at the odds, he's a son of so you think. He's a Stradbroke winner, just like Alligator Bloods of Stradbroke Lee. One for one. And have a look at them. Big, big betting that's obviously come on. Think about it. Late today. So that's... Well, they both ran terrific, which... Um... I was pretty confident coming into the race that not only would my two run well, that, that Moody was the only, Peters was the only danger, so... Uh. During Queensland, what's this guy? We spoke about him uh, during Queensland thinking, if you train him for a Cox Plate, I'm not unconvinced yeah. that he couldn't be there. He's, uh, it's, a, it's going to be a really interesting journey with him where we go from here, so uh, lost for words, but it, it, it's an incredible perform performance to stay at 12 because after he won the Stradbroke, if it wasn't for the Everest being what it is, I, n I never would have aimed him at this race at, at a 1,200 metre. That's think about it to the outside, just getting past alcohol free and setting sail for victory. Off his back is Private Eye. Placed in the race last year, returns to run third and splitting him is I wish I win. As mentioned, gate one was always going to be perhaps the question mark. Luke Nolan getting him into some clear air late and he was able to then get to within half a length, maybe even a little bit shorter was the margin in the end on Think About It, who Joe Pride has done such an incredible job with across the course. Of the he's... he's uh, his IVR rating was you know, plus six, which is 
Uh, that's some seriously elite figures. That puts him up in the realm of, of an Imperatriz. And there's got to be something... And who knows, if he gets out early, he may well have won the race. And in secret was just fantastic. Fastest last 800, 600, 400. Second fastest last 200 of the day. Uh, if she was, if she drew a barrier, she may well have... Uh, it might have been, I wish I went in in secret, fighting out the finish. But horses that put themselves in the spot, it's a big advantage. Please. George Main. So, racing New South Wales thought the time was right to have a King Charles III, a Queen Elizabeth stakes in the autumn and a King Charles III stakes. So, they changed the day, they moved it a month, they brought it into this day, which has made the Everest Day even greater in so many ways. And as Katie said earlier, it's given it that group one. So many ways. And as Katie said earlier, it's given it that group one. It's now the richest weight for age race in the world, over 1,600 metres, and the captain. But I can't believe the amount of money I'm seeing for this horse. In terms of the hold, about 60% of the hold, but in terms of comparative money, there is 4.2 times more on Mr Brightside than there is on Fangirl. In a race of this sort of nature, $1.95. Three man, then came Nugget from Buckaroo at Tissue. Well back, Whittle, Hope in Your Heart, and Kovalika in a three wide position. Last of all, it's the Epsom winner, Rodina, at the 600 metres, a half in front to Golden Mile. In third position, my Oberon, a half the outside to Mr Brightside, given every possible hope in the run. Then came Fangirl and two lengths to think it over. Head of the straight, Rodina in front from Golden Mile. My Oberon moves up boldly on the outside. Now Mr Brightside and Fangirl, here they come. Fangirl moved up. Fangirl takes the lead from Mr Brightside. He's got a job to get there. The mare's going great guns, Fangirl. Charles III beat Mr. Brightside and my Oberon. I think Nugget fourth, then Kovalika further back to think it over. Hoping you and it was an event too good for her so many times. She gets a third group one. Look at her accelerate here. She's absolutely charging away. And my Oberon, who was second in that Doncaster behind Mr. Brightside, they basically finished the same today, yeah. don't they? But being bloused by George Main, five million dollars, moved to Everest Day and Fangirl. Fantastic. Wink stakes at the start of the preparation. A look at her just explode up the Randwick mile here. We've expected we'd see this from her at Randwick 1600 throughout her career so far, and this was a peak performance yesterday. To consider that she's beaten Mr Brightside, the calibre of his credentials as a dual Doncaster winner at the Randwick 1600, and obviously what he's done in the Melbourne Spring thus far, to beat Mr Brightside by two and a half lengths, a smashing performance from the Chris Square, wasn't it? Mm. Ben, oh, she's th yeah, she's Mr him. Brightside has yeah. every possible. Yeah, sure yeah. did. She's such a good... She's now, thanks to Daily Sectionals, it's rated only narrowly behind the Everest. Different rate shape. They've really ripped home there again. But um, I think she's... I, I, you know, she's won a Viner. I don't know if she's as good at 2,000 Viner. I don't know if she's as good at 2,000 metres, but she's in the conversation now for a Cox Plate. Why, why not? If she gets dry ground... Um, You'd have to think. It's Scalacci stakes the 54th edition, 1,100 metres since 2015. Group 2, wait for age contest named after the great... And there's been a very good rally late for Asfura here at Caulfield. You know she's a track and trip winner and loves this, uh, loves this distance. Ingratiating his last, 800 metres to go. So it's Asfura and Uncommon James and they're stride for stride. Two and a half to home rule chain of lightning. So as they reach the 500 metres, so Uncommon James continues to serve it up to Asfura and they match motors at the 400 metres three links chain of lightning home rule then came Lombardo well back Karen ingratiating Key Largo it's Asfura under a bit of a grip here at the 250 and got a length in front of Uncommon James three links chain of lightning and then Lombardo but Asfura has dropped Uncommon James 100 metres to go Asfura for Mitch Aiken three or four links in front and she's a body mare Asfura bolted in Uncommon James second Second, Chain of Lightning third, photo four, Lombardo and Curran. Then... Oh, she's a beauty ass for uh, Loves Caulfield. I think you can circle about the 300. This was great racing. I really enjoyed this race. So you had the match race in the market <coughs> and you had the match race on the track. So Damien Lane blinkers on, thought, all right, I'll go up and serve it up to Asfur and see if she's vulnerable at 1,100 metres. And uh, I love the way Mitch Aiken wasn't bullied. He stayed off the fence. He had a plan. He wanted to get to a certain part of the track and he wasn't overawed by the occasion at all. Got to the part of the track he wanted and when the acid was poured on, as it was Uncommon James that, that popped in the home straight. And she's done a, another good job as Fura. Um, she's just a mare that's continuing to 
improve. I thought it was a career peak last start behind Imperatriz, and she's gone on with it, run another really good figure to win yesterday dominantly. Um, Henry Dry's doing a uh, couple of the sharps have taken non-conformist at that price. 26 to 21, forgot you the blowout there right down the bottom for the afternoon. The Neds might and power last year. He's on an upward spiral and he's heading south in the market. He has been all week at this track and distance uh, in the past. Uh, for me, I thought that she's produced a terrific parade here. I genuinely think she's come back bigger and stronger this clip. There's been a good go for just fine here. Hard fit dropping back from the 2400 metre Metropolitan was a brilliant winner 2100 metres prior. He's a shocker. non is last. So deny knowledge. Swings through halfway at the 950 58 or 9 lengths in front of Alligator Blood doing the donkey work. A length and a quarter to just fine. Then came Lindemann. A length and a quarter. He's a shocker. Then nonconformist Vow and Declare forgot you. Alan Kerr and two and a half to Jewess. 700 metres to go. It's Deny Knowledge starting to paddle now. Five lengths in front of Alligator Blood. Make it four. Then came Just Fine who sold up from Lindemann. Two lengths to He's a shocker. Nonconformist. Then Vow and Declare a long way back with Alan Kerr forgot you and Dewis's last deny knowledge with alligator blood now breathing down her neck and around the corner alligator blood went to the front from deny knowledge who's gone then Lindemann just fine foul and declare and Dewis back on the inside alligator blood 200 meters to go four legs in front of Dewis foul and declare running a race and then non-conformist but it is all alligator blood a seventh group one coming up and alligator blood wins it by two legs what a run back and declare Jewess third, then non conformist Alan Kerr deny knowledge. He's a shot. One there, seen one there. He joins northerly, so you think, and Ocean Park, no less, as the only four horses this century to win the Underwood and then triumph in the race known as the Caulfield Stakes, but now badged as the might and power. Deny knowledge set it up yesterday. He was fifth beaten two lengths in this race and also the Cox Plate last year. Suffice to say, again, no disrespect to the field in yesterday's might and power, but there certainly wasn't any animos or I'm thunderstrucks to deal with. Tim Clark gets it done. This horse has now got seven. Horse has now got seven Group Ones under his belt. Gay Waterhouse wins the race for the second time. The only horse that wasn't under complete sufferance on the turn and, and travelled up was Alligator Blood. He he's answered his uh, 2,000 metre credentials just emphatically there, and he's run the highest rated performance of the day thanks to, to Daily Sectionals. So he's thrown his hat in the ring as a genuine Cox Plate contender off off this performance. So a couple of weeks, I've just feel like we're going to look at the home turn and the Cox Plate and he's going to be somewhere prominent in the screen. Yep, he will. He's that sort of horse. Uh... Track is swinging back, which is great news for the Caulfield Guineas and also a two-rack if you want to... Guineas, 1,600 metres for the three-year-olds at set weights. Three million dollar prize pool last year. Best of the day, militarise. I uh, just can't wait to see him over 1600 metres. There was a I'm waiting him for, get to, for him to get to a mile. He looks like a miler. He's really well. Going to start your clear cut favourite and the most popular with sports bet. But saying that, Stepati has his supporters. You know he's unbeaten. Griff goes to the outside. Southport to Cabana. Then came Little Bros and She Light is three deep. A length Southport Tycoon followed by Militarise and Centrefires at the back of the field with Wolfie as they run by the 600 metres. So Griff looks to sool it up from here now. About three quarters of a length in front of Limburg. A length and a half. Stapati is right there. Peels out three wide with every chance. Then came V8 behind them from King Colorado. Then came for Dad as they run the corner. Rock Empire the longest yard under pressure and then she light Stapati moves up on the outside, but Griff had a kick in the locker, and V8 is getting out as well. Griff kicked at the 200 metres, about a length in front of V8 and Stapati. It's still Griff by a length to V8. Griff is holding V8 for now. Griff wanders about. It's still in front though, and Griff wins a dramatic finish. Griff has won it from V8 Stapati, King Colorado. Will we hear more behind them? Vadad in company with Little Bro South. Draw to give Kieran Mar and. Dave Eustace, yet another trophy. They add the Caulfield Guineas to their bulging cabinet here. And for the first time, Caulfield Guineas, there was a bit going in on behind. 
as Griff shifts out here, we get a good look at the head-on as well. And that certainly looks more significant than what the side-on shot told us. So, And I think in all the analysis of what happened late in the race, Ben, we've overlooked the effort of Ben Mallum from the outside gate from 15 here to get Griff into the spot he did in these first couple hundred metres. It was a winning move. It was a spectacular ride, watching the breakdown of the sectionals yesterday. And pride of Jenny. Where to next for the West Aussie star? That question is to be answered via the Turak. It's a fascinating contest because there's... It's like she's ready to peak. Oh, there was a couple of roughies that could be uh, well placed down in the weights. Attrition, and amenable and even... And make a case for many of them, even from the yard, but I'm sticking with Amelia's jewel. I've got the... He's a $4.60 favourite to win a Cox Plate. And she's $2.40 here, favourite for the Turak. 460 in a Pride of Jenny, the leader, 850 metres to go, three quarters of a length, Savannah Cloud, two lengths, Amenable, who got some cover on the outside of Ironclad, a length here to shock, and then came Attrition, two lengths to Pounding Charter House, also in that group of horses, Amelia's Jewel looking for clear air out deeper, a length and a half corner pocket, Antino, Pinstripe, See You in Heaven, Banker's Choice, Bell Toro, and the inevitable. Pride of Jenny tried to get away before the corner, three lengths, Savannah Cloud, Amenable, they were followed by attrition. Amelia's Jewel brought to the middle of the track and then came here to shock out of the whip from Antino and then Charterhouse. Pride of Jenny at the 200 with Amenable and then came attrition further back. Amelia's Jewel, Pride of Jenny at the 150, then Amenable attrition and then came Antino on the outside. It's a big finish in the Turak. Antino moves up to attrition. Antino and attrition, they hit the line. Attrition or Antino, nearly a dead heat. Attrition's kick strongly, photo third, Banker's Choice and also Amenable. They were followed by Pins, followed by Pinstripe, Pride of Jenny, Amelia's Jewel. I don't think she wanted to be here today. The Inevitation kicks and wins. Bo Mertens for Mitch Friedman. Attrition Group is 1 ducks broken for two of the nice guys of racing. Mitch Friedman and Bo Mertens combined with a track handicap. Bo Mertens. Um, what a ride from Bo. A great effort from the team. Um, you know, everyone takes a, a massive part in it. And, um, you know, this is what we get up in the morning to do. And, and today in this race. Well, I've been drinking water all day. I've got to run a marathon tomorrow, so... No, the marathon. Yeah. Um, we might have to reassess. Uh, the celebrations might have to be tomorrow, but how good. Um... Dollar 80 opening quote out to even money and 205 now. So easing in the market is your short price favourite, and she's a hot favourite for... Ready, single racing. And last of all is Dolphin Skin approaching the 600 metres. It's the favourite, Tropical Squall. By a length, Everlasting Kiss. A length, Saxon Beauty. Coco Sun under pressure, passed by Grinzinger Bell, then came Autumn Angel, who's in an awkward place at the moment, could be dragged back by a tiring filly, Kona Santa around her they were followed next by another Ewan Bond mistress, Tropical Squall shown the whip on the point of the corner and she dashed away, three lengths, Grinzinger Bell, Saxon Beauty is gone Autumn Angel's got out, Kona Santa down the outside, Tropical Squall 200 metres to go, two and a half Kona Santa and Autumn Angel, Tropical Squall, 100 metres to go Autumn Angel's picking her back. Tropical Squall grabbed by Autumn Angel. She's got her. Autumn Angel gets up to win it. A half length Tropical Squall. Photo third, Basilina or Kona Santa, and they were followed by another U. Autumn Angel, so, so often it's stut stakes that provides us with the winner of the Ethereal in 2023. And the former Anne Griff and the former Anne Griff and the Caulfield Guineas continues to get enhanced. Tropical Squall. The Caulfield Cup. No peer. There's been plenty of talk around Gold Trip. He's going to have to be the first horse in the metric era to win the Caulfield Cup with 58 and a half kilos. Then we've had seen. For the record, uh, I like one of the favourites without a fight. I thought the run in the two. It's all about Gold Trip here, folks. Uh, he is the best backed runner on the sports bet books. Although you'll see that he was 4.80 out to $5.50 and $6. We're holding twice as much as we as what we are on the second elect in West Wind Blows in the Q22. And this is grand final day, of course. He comes here off just one spring run in the Underwood. I thought it was a terrific run. Fastest last 200 of the race. Looks ideally suited over 2,400 metres on firm ground. And the perfect... 400 metre handicap. Everything I've seen from without a fight since he joined the Friedman stable has pointed towards the Caulfield Cup and he finally draws the right barrier. So I think... I'm with Gold Trip. He won the Turnbull in fine style. He's a... Also with a lot of quality, a lot of class, and he's fronted up in really similar... Really like the improvement that without a fight has made.
dollars each or two as they head out onto the track for the Caulfield Cup. It's a fantastic betting race. The liability is Gold Trip, the toppy. If he wins, we lose big time at Sportsbet. But West... They make a good line and they're racing and West Wind blows, hesitated, missed the start two or three. Sulcum six lengths last early. Bois d'Argent began well. Fame is last. It's 30 lengths first to last. Spirit Ridge kept them motoring towards the 1,000 metres by a length to Goldman. Hu Yamal third the inside followed by United Nations. A length and a quarter valley and King right you are. Two lengths Bois d'Argent followed by breakup. The Japanese runners only about seven or eight off the front. Two lengths West Wind blows then Emma Emissary without a fight. Further back is Gold Trip, who's 15 off the lead from Francesco Gardi. Then a gap, Sulcum, well back in the field. Montefilia, Duke de Cesar, Akita, Sushi and Fame. Spirit Ridge at the 600 metres. Led the field from United Nations. Who your male's got a split? Right you are, made a line of four. They're a length and a half, Valley and King. Breakups coming on. So too, West Wind blows. Without a fight's the widest. Gold Trip is tracking into it. Needs a run, though. Right you are, who your male into the straight from Valley and King. West wind blows, break up. They were followed by Bois d'Argent without a fight and Gold Tripper running on. West wind blows at the 200 without a fight, runs on, lays in on top of Gold Trip. West wind blows 100 to go without a fight, coming at it without a fight. West wind blows, the heat in unison without a fight, without a fight for the Caulfield Cup. Narrowly from West wind blows and Gold Trip. Fourth right you are with Bois d'Argent. They're a length and a half, Valley and King. Breakups coming on. So too West wind blows without a fight. Fights the widest. Gold Trippers tracking into it. Needs a run though. Right you are. Who you mailed into the straight from Valley and King. West wind blows. Break up. They were followed by Bois d'Argent. Without a fight and Gold Tripper running on. West wind blows at the 200. Without a fight runs on. Lays in on top of Gold Trip. West wind blows 100 to go. Without a fight coming at it. Without a fight. West wind blows. The heat in unison. Without a fight. Without a fight for the Caulfield Cup. Narrowly from West wind blows and Gold Trip. Fourth right you are with Bois d'Argent, followed then by Valiant King Sulcum. Break up and Duke de Cessa behind that a fight to the day and got it spot on. They took him to the Underwood off his Queensland winter where he burst onto the Australian scene with those dominant victories in the Lord Mayors and then the Q22 for many. It was a big call not to perhaps go through a longer, more traditional route and tack Asian behind Alligator Blood. They targeted the Caulfield Cup and in the end, he has prevailed. And Mark Zara is the story here. He's pulled the right rein. He's been part of the Gold Trip story all the way through. Would Gold Trip go to the race? We weren't winner. Stuck with without a fight. He committed. And as a result, he's now a two-time winner of a Caulfield Cup after success on very elegant back in 2020. West Wind Blows has run enormous for Jamie Spence. It was outstanding. Um, it, it was a Caulfield Cup that promised so much going into it. Everyone was waxing lyrical about what a strong field it was and it delivered big time. Yeah, the pace was on, quality was to the fore in the race and uh, I really enjoyed it. My, my out in 73, home in 73, Ben. This was the third fastest Caulfield Cup since Diatribe set the race record in 2000. And the significant thing about that, dailysectionals.com.au, 15 lengths quicker than average was the speed set up front by Spirit Ridge. So it was a genuine... Bois d'Argent without a fight and Gold Tripper running on. West Wind blows at the 200. Without a fight runs on. Lays in on top of Gold Trip. West Wind blows 100 to go. Without a fight coming at it. Without a fight. West wind blows, the heat in unison, without a fight, without a fight for the Caulfield Cup. No so Mark Zara becomes a two-time Caulfield Cup winning jockey. Standard from, from the old man, I called him <laughs> about 45 minutes after and his first words were, that was good. <laughs> and that was probably the extent of the, of the, of the, of the conversation. So, um, um, really well and we'll go straight to the, straight to the Melbourne Cup now. And, and his firm ground, the key to him as well, like last year in the Melbourne Cup. Ben Mellon did a great job of good gold trip. Maybe felt the weight. Maybe the Quinella was just a bit too good for him, but it was a sensational race. A fascinating triangle revolving around Mark Zara with our place getters. So, as we know, he rides and had committed to without a fight. His best mate, Jamie Spencer, is on West Wind Blows. Without a fight, of course, being trained by the Crisfords, who previously had without a fight in their camp when he was in the Northern Hemisphere. And then and back there... Gold trip. And then back there in third, you've got Gold Trip, the yep. horse that, of course, he's had such an incredible association with through the Melbourne Cup. Yeah, I like Romantic Warrior and the three-year-old militarised. I think that horse could 
potentially explode going to 2000 being by done deal. Uh, but great, great. It was run on the same day as the Caulfield Guineas, which I don't think was right. Montefilia was able to win one of those on that occasion. And now it's been moved to 2022. Now it's... If you are keen on Tom Kitten, the price has stayed there. Our traders are taking this runner on $2 out to $2.35 today, despite a wave of money going in that direction. Big Deeper out on the outside of Ravello. Two lengths away to Tom Kitten, travelling strongly on the rails in advance of Port Lockroy. Further back then to Long Jeans from Tuta Levita, Capfara between runners, two off to Madatsu and Rambolon sees them all inside the 800 metres and Raff Attack leads the way by length to Glad you think so. Gambare's at a cheap run on the fence, Kintyre deeper out followed by Ravello. Then team Tom Kitten is gradually improving his position on the rails. Port Lockroy's come off the bridle, then Capfara and Tuta Levita the filly's right behind the favourite although Hieronymus is coming well off the fence now on Tom, peeling forward what are they straighten? Raff attack with a bit of a kick. The stable mate Gambaro giving chase. Tom Kitten rounding them up. So is Port Lockroy on the outside and Tuta Levita running on. Tom Kitten got to the front. 200 metres to run. And Tom's going strongly. Look at Tom go. Two, three, four in front. Kaffara down the outside in a second. Now that's the best of Tom Kitten today. A much deserved Group 1 victory. Tom Kitten won the spring champion in a cakewalk from Kaffara and Gambaro. Then came Tuta Levita, a gap to Port Lock. Light stakes, the perfect ride. Yeah, it was a, such a good ride, so confident. But Lizzie, Lizzie, I think we've seen a serious horse now. There's been a lot of things, you know, what's going on. That was an emphatic performance. That's what we wanted to see from the short price favourite, and he was got him favourite, and he was got himself a spring champion stakes and a derby contender by the looks. With Tom Kitten sailing away to win yesterday's spring champion stakes in Sydney by four lengths. It's the third Group One. For Adam Hieronymus, he's having a fantastic spring on his return to the saddle as well. Of course, this is the race that we saw Manzois come out of and run eighth last year. Sharp and Smart won the race. They then ran the Quinella in the Derby and he looks at... ...of the invitation so far for the Phillies and the Mares, Lizzie. We certainly have promised that success was able to win the first invitation and Ice Bass, who then went on and won a group... ...Espiona's just best backed with Tab. And that said, it's just held its price while the other one has firm. So a point separating them to start. Now 30 cents short at Magic Time. There's a big... The Queen went to the front now from Alcohol Free and Magic Time's on a three-wide path. So the favourite will have to earn a victory today. Parasar with a cheap run on the inside of Royal Merchant. And Ruthless Dame whips up, getting cover on the back of the favourite. Then came Osbred Flirt. Opal Ridge back on the rails as they approach the home corner. 500 metres to run. Banana Queen just in front from Alcohol Free. Free, magic time, then Paracel. Ruthless Dame scrubbed up on the outside of Royal Merchant. Espiano is getting right to the outside and coming home with a very good run. Alcohol Free moved up, hit the lead. Magic time keeps coming. Espiano is lengthening on the outside with Ruthless Dame knuckling down. What a great finish here. Espiano trying to shake off Ruthless Dame. Magic time's brave. Espiano laying in, nose in front, just won it. Espiano just won the invitation from Ruthless Dame and Magic Time. Alcohol free, kicked on. The Osbred flirt. Roy McAvoy. Royal Merch. What about Kerry McAvoy, Lizzie? He won the first two Everest. He's won the only three invitations. <laughs> we know what a great record he's got in all those other. But he likes a quid, doesn't he? She was brilliant, but it was a really, really good race. I have to make an honourable... ...his defeat at Caulfield. OK, it's about one horse now coming up for the Manicato. It's all about the champion mare in Peritris. Shooting for a third Group 1 here at Mooney Valley. You know she won the Moyer and she's a weak... Last three starts either side of a spell. Winning the William Reid over last year's winner of this race, Bella Nipitina. She's returned to break the 1,000-metre track record here at the Valley twice. In the McEwen running 56.68. In the McEwen running 56.68. 56.47 to win the Moyer. <laughs> Yeah, she broke the track re record. The $2 million Group 1 now finds its home alongside the Cox Plate. We've got a small but select field. A lot better. Uh, look, Imperatriz has put her best foot forward to, today. In your short price favourite here. Uh, no news is good news there for uh, punters. Inferno, and they're not going that hard. 7.50 out, Imperatriz. The odds on favourite. Led Jigsaw by half a neck. They're a length and a half. Uncommon James, I am war. The Inferno's trying to get off the fence. It's on the steel. And last, I am me. Imperatriz now skipped. A length and a quarter. Jigsaw immediately under pressure. Coming up to the turn at the 350. 
Uncommon James Hook to the outside from I Am War, who's almost going backwards, passed by the Inferno and I Am Me, but Imperatrice glides around the corner. Three lengths in front of Uncommon James, then I Am Me up the middle, but Imperatrice called upon, still three lengths in front, and the Tangerine Tsunami's going to do it again. Imperatrice won it well, second... I am me, Uncommon James or the Inferno for third, a gap to I am war and Jigsaw. All hail the Queen of the Valley in the spring of 2023. They've had a plan, Tiakau, he's done the seat warming in between, but Opie is here and Imperatrice once again is a Group 1 winner at the Valley. The William Reid in the... Bring in the McEwen and the Moya, what a machine. What a horse. Uh, maybe start time. She's Australia's best sprinter, I think, at the moment. And um, <laughs> she, uh, thanks to the daily sectionals, she's run another thumping time. She was the highest rated performance on the day, and uh, I think she's probably at the moment the best sprinter in the country. And me up the middle, but Imperatrice called upon. Still three legs in front, and the Tangerine Tsunami's going to do it again. Imperatrice won it well. Second. Interesting me, note in the stewards report. Right, Opie Bob. Think about it. Whenever he gets challenged, he, he whenever the bar's raised, he clears it. So let's raise the bar really high and see how he would go against Imperatrice and... and um, sort of where the... the Afterwards, when I went and congratulated him, I said, how good is she? And we know how good a jockey Opie is and all the good horses he's ridden. He said to me, the best I've ever ridden. So you mate. go back through. It's a memory that you'll die with. It's the Ladbrokes Cox Plate. Actually, you have to get it right. And punters are saying that James McDonald on Romantic Warrior will tactically get it right. He got out to $3.90 at one stage, back into Thar. I am. There's two here for me, two bets that I could have in the race. One of them, Romantic Warrior on top. I think he... Yeah, I'm happy to, be with, happy to be with Romantic Warrior as well. And the other horse that I want to be on is Fangirl, who I think will get the last opportunity. Gone with Mr Brightside on top. His parade today reminded me of his parade prior to an all-star mile. It's the best he stepped out. Go in the Cox Plate now. He got out to as far as $4. He's now into $3.30. The money coming for the favourite. James McDonald riding the Hong Kong champion here. The market says he's right. Um, racing in the Cox Plate. Romantic Warrior jumped away well with Alligator Blood and Militarise over on the far side. Victoria Road just got chopped out there and King Colorado shows speed out deeper and Zaki out even wider at the judge. Alligator Blood joined by King Colorado. Romantic Warriors just behind those horses, three and four deep on the first corner and Zaki's out even deeper. They were followed by Militarise and Mr. Brock and a half. My Oberon and Gold trip well back pinstripe and last is Fangirl at the 1,000 metres. King Colorado in front by a neck to in second. Zaki, a length and a half to Alligator Blood, a length and a quarter Romantic Warrior. Then came Mr. Brightside saving every inch of ground. A length and a quarter Victoria Road, followed by Dewis. Then Militarise, Gold Trip, My Oberon, Pinstriped and Fangirl is last. To the side of the course at the 700, King Colorado with Zaki the outside. Alligator Blood is poised. A length Mr. Brightside sneaking ground the fence. Then came Romantic Warrior. Further back is Jewess, Victoria Road, Gold Trip, My Oberon, Pinstriped, and Fangirl with Militarise up to the corner. Zaki claims King Colorado. Alligator Blood is right there. Romantic Warrior, four deep, a length and a half off them. Mr. Brightside off the fence, needs room. And then came Jewess into the straight. Alligator Blood at the 200 took the front. Romantic Warrior the outside. Alligator Blood at the 100. Romantic Warrior, Mr. Brightside. Still Alligator Blood. Mr. Brightside coming out. It's a photo finish. Zaki claims King Colorado. Alligator Blood is right there. Romantic Warrior, four deep, a length and a half off them. Mr. Brightside off the fence, needs room. And then came Jewess into the straight. Alligator Blood at the 200, took the front. Romantic Warrior, the outside. Alligator Blood at the 100. Romantic Warrior, Mr. Brightside. Still Alligator Blood. Mr. Brightside coming at it with Romantic Warrior. It's a photo finish. Mr. Brightside or Romantic Warrior. It's a photo finish. Alligator Blood third for fourth. We've got Fangirl in company with Jewers who ran a race. Then Zaki, Gold Trip, well back in the Colorado and Victoria Road. Romantic Warrior is going to get up by a nose.
Romantic Warrior has denied a Hayes fairy tale in the Cox Plate. The plan has come together for Danny Shum, James McDonald, and Hong Kong. In an Craig Williams bidding to take the Cox Plate back to Hong Kong, and James McDonald becomes the first jockey since Michael Clark in 1989 and 1990 on Almorad, and ironically, in some respects, better loosen up in those famous Lindsay Park silks. J Max, the first jockey to go back to back in the Cox Plate on different horses for 33 years. And Romantic Warrior has shown all of his championship qualities to flex late and win the Cox Plate. So much. I've got so much faith in this horse, and oh my god. I thought I got beat. I know. I know you thought you got beat. And uh, we won the good fight, baby! We him to have that much emotion with a horse like this. And what a huge thrill for this race to have the horse from Hong Kong come here and just narrowly deny Mr. Brightside, who was so brave, in defeat for Craig Williams. Credit to Peter and Danny. Eli. Takes a hell of a lot of balls to come out of Hong Kong with all the prize money. Best right, one of the best racing just jurisdictions in the world, and they come here and showcase their boy. I reckon he's got more to come to. He's just been bubbling. He made significant amount of improvement, like like we thought he did. And he loves the bloody valley. It took. It was a privilege to be a part of it, and oh, it's it's the best race for me. It, it really is. You know, we we mentioned those the, the data at the bottom of the screen, but official timing just 0.22 of a second outside of Winx's track record set in this race in her third win in 2017. Yeah, so there were some murmurs that King Colorado was going to go forward, and, and he did just that. By Cox Plate. The front Romantic Warrior, the outside Alligator Blood at the 100. Romantic Warrior, Mr. Brightside. Still Alligator Blood. Mr. Brightside coming at it with Romantic Warrior. It's a photo finish. Mr. Bright or Race almost Warrior. needs 12 individual assessments, given the quality and the runs in it as well. Well, Como, I had some of the Mr Brightside connections behind me. They thought they'd won to my eye looking at the screen and as they hit the line, it looked the way, but it's amazing. Well, the well if you see... Right behind the, the, that, yeah. that crew, and I thought, as I said, I thought he had won, and, and obviously they did. And it was actually heartbreaking when they realised that he hadn't. I mean, mm. we... Well done, Romantic Warrior and Connections, but uh, I thought for, for Lindsay Park and the boys and, and the crew and the team, um, just shattering once, because they genuinely... The purchase and then... The they have held pretty much unlucky. Uh, Dewis, I still think if she got to the outside of Romantic Warrior at the top of the straight, we could be here saying it was a fairy tale for Damien Oliver. She, I, I still think that she was probably the unluckiest in the race, so how good does that look for our... Right, hence the margin <laughs> of a nose on the line. Ultimate game of inches. Take nothing away from Craig Williams, though, Michael Walker. It was a fantastic ride. As good a ride as you'll see on the day after having to go to plan the whole race and knowing that you're going to win it. The other thing is you, you can certainly make a case Jules was unlucky. I think you can definitely make a case Fangirl was unlucky. Um, so this place, the, this place the elite of the elite. I was probably where he spoke. This race, the Giga Kick, uh, named after the winner of last year's ever. So that's how he had one point. So a dollar ninety now out from a dollar seventy. Private Eye at two seventy has been a firmer, and then Bella Nipatina is hardly any money. Middle at the tail of the field. This is a good go for the lead. Bella Nipatina. She's pushing through the middle of the ruck and goes to the front from Cole Crusher. Zapata drop back and think about it. Gets the fourth. Sam Clipperton's done his job. The favourite in a brilliant spot at the eight hundred metres. Private Eye's back down on the rail at this point on the inside of Marzoo, then Cascadian and Surf Dancer see them all. Cole Crusher in front. Clipperton wasn't happy with the set and he gets going now and think about it and think about it. Strides to second. Bella Nipotina third and now Private Eye is slicing through into fourth. Coming around the turn. Cole Crusher swings in front. A length and a half. Think about it. Bella Nipotina locked up on the inside then Private Eye further back Zapatel. Marzu down the outside. Cole Crusher in front. Think about it. A neck away. Now level and private eyes heading top gear on the outside. Private eye and think about it. Private eye hits the lead. Bella Nipotina late, but private eye in front from Bella Nipotina charging. Oh my goodness, this is close. Bella Nipotina lunging at private eye.
Think about it third. Then came Cole. Pick it at the moment in the points. If she wins this, she gets the whole lot. They hit it. She's got it, I reckon. She, and she has. She's, got, she's got the big sweep. Craig Williams, who's won an Everest, he's got the Golden Grand Slam, and they get the big payday today. Sensating ride there from another jockey. You could see Craig Williams. He's looking, waiting, urging for that gap. There's no room, even less room than there was with Sweet Mercy in the previous race. He got chopped out of it. He found the line. What a performance. Oh, Richard, what a race, what a ride, and what a fair dig of upset on the line. Well, a pro uh, you know, really running a massive race because he'd been building and building and building. And um, the team. This was the highest rating performance of the day, thanks to daily sectionals and huge win, given she lost momentum in the home straight. And Private Eye had his full momentum. She was still able to pick up and and uh, and beat him. Think about it. Ten million dollars in prize money and an outrageous trophy that would sit very well with that. Everest masterpiece. It's right up there with one of the most richest races in world sport. Own the winner of the gold. That's enough. Hawaii 5 0 has been absolutely truckloaded the last five minutes. Amelia's Jewel just trims in 10 cents as I speak, so we have equal favourites now, but I can assure you the best backed runner in the race was 50 on the third line. Oban Buramai at $7, the Japanese horse, trimming in from double figures today. Pericles at 11, Kovalika at that. Too much interest in any of them. Bass Trade Acer, I know it's 26 out of 51, but they're well, back on the inside of the favourite Amelia's Jewel in the red cap. Further back to Straight Acer, Oban Buramai. Then came Vienna Princess, Ruthless Dane. Then came Legato from Knight's Choice, Galeron Trade to start a run. Kovalik has been shuffled back to join Rosita at the tail of the field. On the corner, it's Golden Mile swinging in front from New Endeavour. Communist has done it tough. Pericles needs a run. Then coin toss, Age of Kings. Amelia's Jewel looking to slice through the pack. Hawaii 5 is still five off them. Nash has got nowhere to go as Golden Mile kicks the stable mate. Pericles giving chase. Golden Mile a length. A half on Pericles getting closer. Obam Buramai is charging home. It's Golden Mile. He got up to beat Pericles and Golden needs a run. Then coin toss, Age of Kings. Amelia's Jewel looking to slice through the pack. Hawaii 5 0 still five off them. Nash has got nowhere to go as Golden Mile kicks. The stable mate Pericles giving chase. Golden Mile a length. A half on Pericles getting closer. Obam Buramai is charging home. It's Golden Mile. Pericles. Obam Buramai. The Japanese stallion bomb them. Obam Buramai. My goodness. What a great finish. He got up to beat Pericles. And Golden Mile followed then by Hawaii 5 0, Amelia, Jewel, and Communist. Then came New England. Just like Lee Scrocheur did, didn't he? From the land of the rising sun, you could see him when he got the gap. This horse, this colt, who's only had five runs before, you could see that he was starting to wind up. He hasn't raced for a long time. He's on the inside. He's got the white with the striped red. The two good Godolphin horses, Zach Lloyd's there, can win it. And have a look at Josh Power, who got the ride during the week. Wind him up and he came with a flashing run and a golden eagle's on its way to Japan and it becomes world famous. A world famous and run second but now we're seeing an international flavour. A horse having his sixth start here in Australia and being able to take out a $10 million race. Josh Parr, a master... Oh. And grabs the golden eagle on Obam Buramai, who was having his sixth career start. He was a group two winner at two, a group three winner at three in his homeland, had been placed a group one. And he dead set flew home. The other story in the race, though, was Amelia's Jewel, who was just in racing's washing machine. Unfortunately, unfortunately for Damien Lane, whose post race comments were effectively, I'm glad I came back alive. Yeah, so that was a nasty incident. There were two horses travelling. Yep. Um, and anything too important, so hopefully it's just something minor that can Ooh. heal up pretty well. But you can see the vision there. She just really gets knocked sideways. And she, like you said, she was... ...supported horse, and we're holding more money than we are on cylinder with Shinzo. 460 into $4.40. Stretton... And ...importance. The Coolmore Stud Stakes for the sprinting three-year-olds. 1,200 metres, $2 million on the line. James McDonald winning the... And it's a great betting race there. There too. Cylinders creeping out to the $4, $3.90 here with sports bet. Uh, Shinzo, when markets open, he's clearly been the best back colt in this. Yeah, I am unstoppable between horses and then came well back in the field. She light treasure way, Butch Cassidy, Mexico and Nadal at the 400. Osmosis in front by a length and a half to Shinzo. Then came V8 
Arkansas Kid and back behind those horses I am Unstoppable Osmosis at the clock tower led by a length to Shinzo Arkansas Kid and I am Unstoppable is running on the leader Osmosis with 50 metres to go Osmosis is clear and will take it out by a length and a quarter Unstoppable second, Shinzo third, photo fourth, V8 or Arkansas kid, then Stretton eight. Unadulterated pandemonium around the mounting yard at Flemington, given what is on the line. Yes, it's am unstoppable on the line. Bjorn Baker. The last six years, and it was the son of a former winner of this race, progeny of Zoostar in Osmosis at $250,000. Ever, ever thought I'd see the day where I say... <laughs> this guy's future, he's now got a, a, a second future as a stallion. Um, but um, uh, I, I thought Rachel really summed it up well. She, um, she assists. So, it's hard um, to have multiple. Here's the feature now, and it's all about Riff Rocket, your favourite for the Victoria Derby. James McDonald looking to hit the board here today, uh, clearly holding Peters, and it's Sacred Eagle just in front of Bulawayo. The 200 to one shot, Tokyo Run made a line of three. Two lengths away, Air Assault for Dad. Then came Rogery, Sunsets. Next is Riff Rocket. Apulia's coming at it. Riff Rocket, Apulia, a hit bobber. Hit bobber, a photo finish. A thrusting, desperate finish between Riff Rocket and Apulia. Heads up and down, Sunsets third, then Cosguy. A gap in the field, McCande for Frank, Air Assaults, then Gold Bullion and Tokyo Run. Photo finish, Riff Rocket will just win. Get to back for Team Waller in the Penfolds Victoria Derby. Manzois last year at a quote. This year, the favourite Riff Rocket gets it done. Um, there's a race where there's a little bit of speed early and home in, in pretty quick sectionals. Riff Rockets run the 20th fastest last 200 of the meeting and Apulia the ninth fastest of the entire day. So they had a bit of running still to do and at the... Um, the Sure. All right, let's look forward to the third of the Group 1s here now, and it's all about the Empire Rose. And Chris Waller, James McDonald are looking to go back-to-back -back Group 1s, and it's all about a tissue. You know, a four, fourth up form here at Flemington is the right form. She's now passed on the outside by Pride of Jenny, who put up about two and a half lengths from Deny Knowledge and Jenny Lala. A length and a half away, alcohol free. Further back in the field as this leader got right away, Wishlaw Lass in fifth place. Next along the inside, more secrets, life lessons to lengths Foxy Frieda. They were followed by Hope in Your Heart, Hinge Shuffle Dancer. Well back at Tissue in company with Barbie's Fox Princess Grace, Osbred Flirt and Renaissance Woman. So as they come up towards the home corner at the 650 and the front runner, Pride of Jenny is seven lengths in front from Deny Knowledge and they're about eight lengths in front of in next position, Alcohol Free Jenny Lala. Then came Wishlaw Lass behind those horses, More Secrets Life Lessons to the middle of the course and back behind them, Foxy Frieda, 350 metres to go. Pride of Jenny is out still by six lengths from Deny Knowledge. Alcohol free, Jenny Lala, life lessons and a tissue the outside at the 200 metres. It's a long home straight for Pride of Jenny. She's starting to walk. She's three lengths. A tissue, two and a half, two lengths. Has she held on? Pride of Jenny, what a ride! Fortune favours the brave, won it by three collars of a length. Pride of Jenny from a tissue, then life lessons. Back Kieran Ma, Mikey Barrett cannot believe what they've just seen. A heist from Declan Bates, an incredible ride to win the Empire Rose for the Otter Brays with Declan Bates's ride, Benny. 0 0.02 of a second outside the race record that Collett set a couple of years ago just indicates... Yeah, so she drew wide. She was terrific uh, winning the stock stakes. Uh, running second to Amelia's Jordan track record time the stock stakes a couple of starts ago and did a good sectionals. The first section of the race, 15.6 lengths faster than average. And when you're clearing Deny Knowledge the way she has, you can tell she's led at a good speed. Also thanks to Daily Se also thanks to Daily Sectionals, highest rating performance of the day. So, um... That's where you thought, they're not... They're not catching this thing. Oh, about the 300, I'm like, oh, it's too big. I thought at about the 800 when there was massive gaps from first to second and then second to the chasing pack. <clears throat> and there were some very good horses 
that were off the bit a long way out, like they were taken out of their comfort zone and you just knew they weren't going to run on. I mean, Prada Jenny tried to do the same thing in the Coolmore last year on a ridiculously hot speed and on the line she was coming again. And, and if a tissue had have loomed up alongside her, I reckon she would have she would have just kicked on. She is so tough, that mare, and great to see her get a Group 1 because she deserves it. And Kieran spoke to that. Yeah, um, Gold Trip, the defending champ, will carry the top weight. I'd, without a fight, the Caulfield Cup winner, who was fantastic, and uh, Hutch all on. Times, I'm not sure how much depth there is to the field. I think there's five or six principles. In the last couple of years, incentivised was 292 years ago when running second to Very Elegant, an $18 winner. And last year, Deauville Legend at $4, who started at $21. So Vorban will probably split the middle there, but has clearly been the additional lead up to a Melbourne Cup without a fight or try and become the first horse since Ethereal back in the early 2000s to do the double. Ben. Hudfield, he's been work a long time, got good ground to sign. Got good ground to suit there, gets good ground to suit again on Tuesday. I did the form, finished the form for the race last night. Was very, very surprised. He's not my top pick, but I went and saw he was $8. I noted there with Ladbrokes, he's already been $7.50 to $6.50 since last night and, and had something on him. I just thought the price was completely wrong last night. I think he's got to be one of the leading chances. Benny, you got the favourite on top, but without a fight, you made a strong case for. Yeah, I think without a fight's the one currently over the odds, but... Uh... Ben's there, so I won't go through the others, but I have thrown in a vow. Oh, what an effort. Yeah, I'm with Catherine. Without a fight, I thought he was fantastic in the Caulfield Cup and the, and the firm grounds. We're just... I've gone without a fight, Sulcum, Breakup and Gold Trip. Trip. Favourites the starting point. I think Sulcum the place is a great bet on Tuesday with Joe Moreira. Track for now at six dollars. Uh, I think that's an attractive bet with Vauban without a fight. Gold trip. Of the piece just got the best manner about him in the mounting yard. He copes well with race. And they are Vauban who leads the way at five dollars and your favourite. We're holding more money though for Gold Trip last year's winner at seven dollars. Without a fight's been rock solid on Melbourne Cup day. Eight dollars absurd. The best towards the back of the field. More felons. Akita Sushi. And last of all, Virtuous Circle, 1,700 metres to go in the Lexus Melbourne Cup. Serpentine is the leader. From on the outside, Carla Poor and Future History is third. A length and a half, Magical Lagoon and also Vow and Declare. And they get away at this stage as they reach the 1,500 metres. They're four lengths in front of Right You Are and Vauban, saving every inch of ground. A length and a half, the stable made absurd. And then came Gold Trip. A length away, La Scotia is three wide at this stage. And then came Military Mission. A length away way in the field is True Marble and then came Alan Kerr to Sean Sweet Jr. without a fight. Shiraz well back in the field, well back two-thirds down as Ash runs Sulcum and break up and they were followed by more felons as they string right out at the 1,000 metres. Akita Sushi is well back in the field as well and towards the back interpretation and virtuous circle. So it's Serpentine running this along very solidly midway towards the 800 metres. It's a true staying test by two lengths to Carla Poor and Future history. Vow and Declare is nice and close, three or four off them. They were followed by Right You Are. Vauban's only about four or five off them. Absurd the outside. Gold Trippers tanking through, needs runs. Deshaun Sweet Jr.'s wedging through them and Alan Kerr, plenty of hopes around the corner. Into the straight in the Lexus Melbourne Cup and here's Vauban on the outside of Future History and Vow and Declare between them. Absurd is also chiming in. 400 metres to go. It's absurd moving up on the outside for Zach Purden. A league in front but without a fight is running on right down the centre of the track without a fight up to absurd bow and declare and Shiraz the bolter it's without a fight, a hundred metres to go two or three lengths in front coming away from Shiraz and also Sulcum without a fight Mark Zara, a Melbourne Cup champion wins it by two lengths Second in the race was Sulcum. Third, Shiraz. They were followed by a photo for fourth. Ash run to Sean Sweet Jr. Then interpretation. The course was Gold Trip and Virtuous Circle was the last and being pulled up at the 200 metres. Right you are. The sweetest slice of history possible for Anthony and Sam Friedman. The father-son training combination and now two-time Melbourne Cup winning jockey Mark Zara who becomes and without a fight and without a fight, enshrines himself in history as just the 12th horse and the first since Ethereal in 2001 to complete the Caulfield Melbourne Cup double. Try and get to the outside, and he sprinted and won easy. It reminded me a little bit of Glenn Boss on Maccabi Diva. Just so cool, so calm, saving ground, picking the right horses, picking the gaps at the right time. And I said before, I was following Alan Kerr, but I had Ollie on, so there's a tick. 
Gold Trip's in front of me. That's, that's a tick. Ryan Moore's in front of him. That's a tick. So I think I can stay here as long as I can. I'll wait for these three, uh, you know, excellent jockeys to start making their moves. We're going to follow them. So I did. Jay make it off. Ollie probably didn't have the horse. And then all of a sudden, I started to travel. And he's a horse that... Oh, I mean, and, but it, it was opening up, and I was getting the front early, but I just knew, I thought, there's just no way on earth anything's coming from behind me, and boom, away we went. How do you talk uh, about right to... to um, don't want to remind Sulkin backers, but you can probably take note of him. He was probably un unlucky to not finish closer. It's debatable whether he could have won. I think it's worth noting how soft without a fight was over the concluding stages. If you're feeling too hard done by with Sulkin, but oh, what, a, what a performance. And it shouldn't be undersold how big an effort it is to do the Caulfield Melbourne Cup double. Without a fight up to absurd bow and declare and Sharon as the bolter. It's without a fight. A hundred metres to go. Two or three lengths in front. Coming away from Shiraz and also Sulkham. Without a fight. Mark Zara, a Melbourne Cup champion, wins it by two lengths. Second in the race was Sulkham. Third, Shiraz. So consider... Um, yeah, so he, he, to suit him 12 he's a ago. dry tracker. Yeah. Did not get conditions to suit. But he was so good coming back uh, during the Brisbane winter, but it's worth noting, Mark Zara... He was going to ride, so um, conditions this year really favoured without a fight as opposed to Gold Trip. They did indeed, and he's... Uh... Harlow Miss, Tropical Squall next to the inside. Then came Everlasting Kiss, a length and a half to serve Cold, who sits on the outside of Basilina. Two lengths, Zardozzi still eight off the front from another U. Ethel Flit and well back Coco Sun with also Ethel Maud. So Amazonian Lass comes around the turn. She's off the rails for Clark at the 450. Two lengths, Harlow missed, And then came Everlasting Kiss, Zardozzi brought towards the middle of the course and Basilina right up on the inside as they reach the 300 metres, Amazonian last joined by Zardozzi. Ethel fled from a long way back, but Zardozzi kicks into gear. Three links in front from Ethel fled, then Basilina. But it's all Zardozzi. Zardozzi coming clear from Ethel fled, and Zardozzi wins the Oaks for J-Mac. Won it by two links. Second Ethel fled, five links Basilina from Amazonian last Coco Sun. So this was not a, a genuine test of stamina in, in a traditional sense, the Oaks this year. So, um, you know, they went at an even enough speed. They weren't, weren't walking by playing tests, and that allowed Zardozzi to just use her superior turn of foot um, and her class shone to the fore, and she was able to sp sprint away from the second horse in Athelflaed, who had her back, couldn't sprint with her, but then was really strong at the finish and, and looks a staying mare of the future. Vaselina for Damien Oliver uh, has ground away into third quite nicely, but... Uh, the winner just had too much class for them. And a good week for Matthew Smith, so you had Ethel Fled run on to into... It's the top two in the market that have been well-backed. Imperatrice just pushed out slightly late in bidding to now be a $2.10 market leader. In Secrets trimmed up late from three ninety into three sixty. You with the Kiwi Mayor? Yeah, I think she's gone to a new level, this preparation, and I think she can... Con I'm happy to be with Imperatrice. She's got... Eight, a very similar parade to what we've seen from her recently. Secret and two-star Kiwi jockeys, James McDonald and Opie Bossum. So, uh, Imperatrice will go off your favourite, but the best-backed runner clearly to beat her is in secret. She got it. End of the field is Bella Nipatina, so the front runner front page, 700 metres to go from Imperatrice, and they were followed by Asfura, tracking the favourite. Next is Star Patrol, in secret tracks Asfura, followed by Lofty Strike, Airman, Buenas Noche, Saint Magique, well back Espiona, and last is Bella Nipatina. So, 450 metres to go, it's front page in front, freewheeling by a length Imperatriz then Star Patrol as Fura back behind those in secret and then came Buenas Noches front page joined by Imperatriz at the 200 metres Buenas Noches and in secret trying to chase down Imperatriz at the 150 Imperatriz in front Buenas Noches coming at her but it's Imperatriz she digs in she's a neck in front another star turn from a Jay's in secret. Fourth in the race was Espiona from Bella Nipatina. Then same as Jeek front page. All hail the sprint queen. Three group, three group runs for the spring. Four in a row with a Opie Bosson in the saddle. Order of I'm Invincible, who's now 17 wins from 23 career starts, three placings. Her prize money will vault north of the $5 million mark.
And Jays, front page joined by Imperatrice at the 200 metres. Buenos not Jays and in secret trying to chase down Imperatrice at the 150. Imperatrice in front. Buenos not Jays coming at her. But it's Imperatrice. She digs in. She's a neck in front. Another star turn from a brilliant mare. Imperatrice from Buenos not Jays in so secret. Eight group Buenos ones now, four in New Zealand, four in Australia. We obviously we know the tone of the four, four lengths. Um, faster than average for the first section. And... Her overall time was the second highest ranked on the day, four lengths above uh, standard, which is about two lengths off what she's done in the Moira and the Manicato. But I think we need think we need to put a caveat on those straight track times for both Derby Day and yesterday. Those strong southerly winds were seriously impacting the times, the closing in a Rupert Clark. But that might be asking. Is race seven the Kennedy Champions Mile over? You guessed it, sixteen hundred metres, and it's two dollars fifty a piece for the top two horses at uh, the top of the market. That being Mr. Bright. Their sixth meeting for the year. Mr. Brightside's finished in front of Alligator Blood on each of those occasions. Slight lean to Mr. Brightside because I think he can get look at exceptional, so you can make a case for each and every one of them. I've gone with Mr. Brightside on top. Of other top class horses. So let's have a look at the market courtesy of Sports Bet. She did get out to sort of 250, 260, 270, back into 240, 245. That'll take. Girl at this stage is about nine to ten off the leader at the 1,000 metres. Pride of Jenny for Declan Bates just slips her a little bit more leather and she led by four or five at this stage. She snuck away at the 800 metres from Alligator Blood. Two lengths Victoria Road, a similar gap, Mr. Brightside. Then came Banker's Choice, the inevitable, and Fangirl is 15 off the leader. A Approaching the turn, 600 to go. Pride of Jenny, can she do it again? She's six in front of Alligator Blood. They were followed by Victoria Road, Mr. Brightside. Back behind them, Banker's Choice, the inevitable. And now fangirl J Mac brought her to the outside and she's starting to soar into it. Pride of Jenny at the 350. Three legs in front of Alligator Blood, Mr. Brightside. Then came fangirl down the centre of the course. Pride of Jenny starting to paddle at the 200 metres. She's a length and a half in front of Alligator Blood. But she's fighting Pride of Jenny. She's still clear from Alligator Blood and Mr. Brightside. Pride of Jenny. This has been spectacular. And Pride of Jenny won again from Mr. Brightside, Alligator Blood, and then Fangirl. Next to finish the inevitable tail of the field, Declan Bates. Take a bow. A masterful performance from horse, jockey, and trainer in the space of seven days. And that's as you for Brightside. They ran 134.86. Last Saturday, that was hurtling. They've gone inside that this afternoon. 134.75. It was an emotional scene. Rolled her along. They all wanted to sit off thinking she'd come back. And she's just been too tough. Huge training performance. But again, such a good ride from Declan Bates to take the race by the scrub. Combination of a lot of... Days ago, and Carl Diorio, who's a great judge, has highlighted this in a tweet overnight, Ben, saying that went out 1.28 seconds slower than the Empire Rose last Saturday, allowing her to register the last 800 1.39 quicker than seven days ago. Same result. Yeah, and the daily section was basically nine lengths faster than standard the first section, then still four lengths faster... The second section of the race, and then the last, completely out on it the last 200 metres. But she's tough, and it gets everyone out of their comfort zone chasing her. And, and most so should horses... the chasing pack have done more, knowing, well, knowing what happened last week. I think knowing the the wind and the pad on the day and how hard it was, yeah, I think they were would have been far better served being closer to her. Now, does that mean they? Courtesy of Sportsbet. West Wind Blows is your favourite. An easy one at that. Some might say he's got the blows. $2.50 out to $3. $3. Zaki, $10 we put up. Ooh, that was gone. It was $5 earlier today. Now four twenty with the way the pattern's going. Proud West. Pretty... Tip coming via the Caulfield Cup. Yeah, I've just been so impressed by his two runs since start. I think that's the key to the race. If he happens to... It's not much between either of them. They both had improvement to come out of their last... It's been, in fact, 270. So good late press here, as my man BZ would say, for West Wind Blow. Zaki, all the damage was done early. 10 into 5. They've gone again into full. First, who's going to tuck in on the rails from Buckaroo. West Wind Blow. Spencer's trying to get it going early. Early and it's now whipping up three and four deep around those horses. Then came Montefilia, who's third last from Zayrek, and last of all down the back section is Sweet Tor. So they get towards the 1400 metres, where it's Zaki joined and now headed by West Wind Blows, who's going to go to the front. They're two lengths to pinstriped in Thor. A length and a quarter young Verta, a similar gap to Dewis. Then came on the outside Buckaroo, then a gap to a tissue, Zayrek, and well back Montefilia, and Wheat Tor as last as they reach the 800. 
100 marker. So the front runner is West Wind Blows. It's been a neutral pace by a length and a quarter. Zaki, two lengths to Pinstripe. They were followed by Buckaroo, who's moving up around the outside and putting itself in the race from Young Verta. Next in the field is Prowess as they run the turn from Jewess, getting away from the rails and is trying to come into it from a tissue. And then came Zarek. West Wind Blows joined by Zaki and heads it off now. Buckaroo made a line of three. The race is on at the 350. A tissue down the outside and Jewess is trying to get a run. Zaki in front. Kicked a length in front. A tissue coming at Zaki though. A tissue moves up to Zaki. Buckaroo and then came Jewess who's trying to come on. But a tissue sprints away. 100 metres to go. Two lengths in front of Zaki. And then Jewess. But it's a tissue. J-Mac again. A tissue wins. Second Jewess. Third young Verta. Photo four. Zaki Buckaroo. Then Weetor. Followed by Prowess. West Wind blows Montefilia Zay. Barkers. The Empire Rose has proven to be the superior form line on Champions Day. Pride of Jenny McDonald. They take out the tab champion stakes. Well, it was a spectacular performance in defeat from a tissue last Saturday, and she proves just how big that run was by going on to win and win decisively in the tab. It was a hallmark of his couple of runs in, in Australia, but Jamie Spencer didn't do anything different that he hasn't done in his past two starts. He likes to get the tempo rolling. He wanted to... Uh, in the run on and this is West Wind Blows. After missing the start, the first Zay section, they're going five lengths faster than average. So he's had to do work on a fast speed and then... Um, he's had nothing left at the finish of the race, so he... A tissue coming at Zaki, though. A tissue moves up to Zaki, Buckaroo, and then came Jewess, who's trying to come on. But a tissue sprints away. 100 metres to go. Two leaks in front of Zaki, and then Jewess. But it's a tissue. J-Mac again. A tissue wins. Second Jewess. Third young... The group 185 for J-Mac, and a tissue repeats the dose of her victory this track and trip this day last year in the Matriarch, but obviously lifting the bar bar significantly going from the Group 2 for the Mares into the Group 1 at Wave for H. Her second Group 1, of course, after winning the Queen of the Turf earlier in the year, had us a lot of the time. Dewis has now stacked together a career that has been consistent across a number of seasons. She's run fourth in a glittering edition of a Cox Plate and maybe with a little bit more luck would have finished closer. And second yesterday in Damien Oliver's final Flemington Cup Carnival Group 1 is... It's a, a really, it's a solid preparation. It's just interesting to go. Previous race now, our attention turns to the Group 1 Sir Rupert Clark Stakes. And while we saw three fillies in the pre, there's been money through the course of betting for many different horses in this race. Bets in this race. Munamek, he's a little bit easy late because of his barrier. But Great Acer can run really well. I can make a strong case for Ayrton. Looked exceptional in the amounting yard. Uh, 11 on top for me, or 15, sorry, on top for me. Yeah. Consider the way that this track is racing. And there are plenty of different opinions out there. As a result, we're not really seeing one horse firm up being the clear one that the money is coming for. I mean, the one that probably is... Pumped well with Chain of Lightning, I Am Me, and also cause for concern as pushing up. Valana holding its position on the rails and General Bow's on the improve with Magic Time 3 deep around road to Arataki as General Bow takes the lead off the back from I Am Me, even Zutori and Munamek. 700 to go. It's been frantic. Buffalo River on the outside of General Bow. A length and a quarter, I Am Me. Two lengths, Chain of Lightning. A length away, road to Arataki. Then came Cause for concern. Magic time sliding up three and four deep. Six off the lead from Valana Bandersnatch. Then came the Inferno. Well back. Ayrton straight. Aces. Skew if Crosshaven. Munamek and Zutori. General Bow. Buffalo River with I Am Me. Who strides up on the outside at the 250. Wrote to Arataki is running on. Magic time the outside. Then cause for concern. I Am Me at the 150. A length in front. Magic time is digging in now under hands and heels. Takes the lead. Skew if late. But it's magic time. Time. Coming clear, a class act. Magic time won it. I am me second. Straight acer up for third from Bandersnatch and Skewiff. Then Ayrton next to complete the... She becomes the 13th mare to win the Rupert Clark and does it in pretty slick fashion, stopping the clock at 122.51. I am me handles the... She sat three wide without cover for the majority of the race in what has panned out to be the wrong part of the track. So this win had so much merit. She's a, a mare that can really take a lot of confidence from this going into the autumn and, and given her running the invitation was so good in the, in the build-up to this, I, I'd think wait for a CF or a futurity in the autumn would be something that you can aim her up 
at because yeah, but it was also in Sydney. Jake, uh, a good. I feel like in time, when we look at the honour roll for the Rupert Clark, we'll be able to point to her and say, "Magic time won this race. This is a good race." Because mm. uh, when you look at a horse that's run such fast time, wide no cover, fourteen hundred metres against the pattern, that's the type of run to me that says that she can get the mile, and she's only had the seven, and she's only had the seven starts. So clearly, she's got scope to do that. So Nick Ryan, as well, trainer of Munamek, who'd legged up D Oliver for his last ever race ride. Looking at the market, $5.50, the three-year-old ripcord. $5.50 and hasn't really moved all that much in the betting. We'll go to the very top, $5.50 for Munamek. So $6.50 in now, and there's a couple of waves of backing also. Dom Desch They're set for a start. The red light is on. The rush for gold is underway. Sava to excel won the start. Comfort me. Red can man away nicely. Oliver's going to go right back towards the tail end of the field, though, with Munamek at the early stages. To go. Over on the outside then. Around the making ground is Comfort Me working into it well. Followed by Carly's Karma Massimo and Ripcord about to let rip as they'd set sail for the judge. And Munamek is trying to weave his way through the field. Red can man took Sava to excel. It none of pressure. Comfort me. Oliver's getting through with Munamek. Ripcord's coming down the outside. Comfort me. Ripcord. It's Ripcord. Ripcord. And now Munamek. Munamek has got there. Oliver's got the run. The racing gods have spoken. It's gold, gold, gold at Ascot. Ollie goes out to winner in the gold rush. Second and third, Ripcord, Comfort Me, Bustler, Red Camo and Ripcord about to let rip as they'd set sail for the judge and Munamek is trying to weave his way through the field. Red Can Man took Sava to excel, Ayrton under pressure, Comfort Me, Oliver's getting through with Munamek, Ripcord's coming down the outside, Comfort Me, Ripcord, it's Ripcord, Ripcord and now Munamek, Munamek has got there, Oliver's got the run. The racing gods have spoken. It's gold, gold, gold at Ascot. Ollie goes out a winner in the gold rush. Second and third, Ripcord, comfort me. Bustler, Red Cat Karma. There will never be another day like it. Extraordinary. Monomek. Number four, ridden by Damien Oliver for Nick Ryan, has won the gold rush. Second, 16, Ripcord, Clint Johnston Porter, seven, Comfort Me.